Right, we are live. So, for anybody who's watching this on the replay, I'm going to go ahead and get into it real quick while everybody funnels in. Uh, this evening, I'm going to be forging a cross peen hammer that I will be auctioning off to benefit Chandler Dickinson. Uh, Dickinson or Dickerson. Anyways, uh, he's a fellow YouTube blacksmith, and so we're going to make a decorative cross peen tonight to be auctioned off on eBay. Uh, to help him out, he is losing his blacksmith shop. So I figured uh, instead of just saying I could pray for you or best of luck to you, I figured I'd do something about it. So thank you to all who's showing up and being here. Remember to like this stream if you like it and uh, promote it across platforms to bring out awareness. So Shadowcaster, Brian Neely, good to have you all here. Good to have you here. So tonight we're going to be forging uh, roughly a pound and three quarter hammer. It is going to be a standard, like uh, what you would consider a German cross peen hammer. I think this is what they call like a German hammer. And it's going to have a motif on it. Now, I'm not going to do the octagon face. It's going to stay a square faced hammer. But I will create uh, an acanthus leaf on the side of this, a chased in acanthus leaf. So. So that's what we will be doing this evening. Hello to everybody who's showing up. Chris Balding, good to have you here. Uh, Brian Neely, once again, thank you. Uh, ben Holbach, hello. Yuhu Flipazoi27. Pastor Josh Smith, hey, how you doing? Champ Ironworks, good to have you here. Uh, Science Addict 77, howdy, howdy. Oh. Uh, yeah, I got your message earlier about doing a raffle. The problem is there's actually certain legalities to doing raffles. And we did not have enough time to take and study up on those. So uh, it's just going to be the high bid gets it. That way it makes it pretty much fair for everyone. No one feels like they got shorted. Uh, the best way to do these things is a raffle. That way you can get, everybody can donate as much money as they want that way. And there's a better turnaround that way. But, uh, but we are going to be doing... Uh, an, auction. an auction instead on eBay since we already have an eBay account and that's the easiest for us so alright so for everybody who's coming in uh, let me recap remember to like this stream if you liked it and, and share it around social media and things like that just trying to get the word out there we're trying to help Chandler out with doing this hammer um, as he's starting to take in lose I guess his blacksmith shop from one of his videos we put a post on that yeah the link's um, not in the description not on this one yeah it is it, well did you start yeah. a new live stream I, I had to start a new live stream because it didn't show oh, up here so a yeah sorry about that <laughs> yeah, all the details in it. yeah I had all the details we'll put try to transfer the details over after this live stream mm -hmm. is over so yeah. everybody's saying hi to you Jess so. hi so good to have everybody here. So this live stream I'm estimating is going to take about three hours. So, um, you know, if you need to go take a potty break or a drink break or do anything like that, catch up on stuff, cat nap, uh, cat nap I'm going to be here for quite a while at this uh, as we got a lot of steel to move and I'm the guy that's moving it. So we're starting with a three and a half inch long blank inch and a quarter square 1045 steel is what we're starting with and we're going to take and forge this out pretty much into a symmetrical taper and then we will punch out the webbing here of these three holes. I did this so this way it could take and save time on the actual drifting and punching and not deform too much of the sidewall since I've got enough. So. Y'all are welcome. So you'll have to read comments okay. and stuff, honey. I have, I, yeah, I'm catching up soon. Big Dog Forge, hi. How's it going, Gid? <laughs> Gib, I should say. Yeah, I spelled the name backwards. I'm sorry about that on his touch mark. Anybody who hasn't seen the touch mark video, I totally flubbed that one up. But I was about four and a half hours in, so I wasn't going to go back and grind out all that work just to, just to start again. Sorry, though, Tim. All right, Let's you can read the flips. questions, and I'm going to get this thing hot here. All righty. A little bit of rotating here. So with the uh, time change, it's actually daylight right now during our live stream, which is, uh, I think this is the first time. 
Plus, it helps for two hours earlier. Oh, yeah, that normal. definitely helps, too. <laughs> <laughs> Big Doug Ford says, it's all good, brother. I love it. <laughs> good. I am glad. I'm going to set this close by because we'll need it. I'm going to switch this hammer right here. Robert Poglet says, the early show, LOL. Yeah, the <laughs> early show. So, yeah. Hello, John Colley. Yes, you're going for a ride. Yeah, I'm going for a ride. Iron Apologize Sunrise for that. Iron Sunrise Forge says, we. Yeah, I tried to do it instead of like all at once, I tried to slow it down so it's not so choppy. Like you feel like you're on a roller coaster or something. Oh. Herb Page says, you have a striker next to you, Roy. <laughs> <laughs> We ain't struck together in a long it's, time, it's so. It's been a couple of years, yeah. yeah. <laughs> what I need is someone to man the camera and someone to strike for me. There you go. Well, that'd be team. the way to do it, so. Mm -hmm. Why are you down so far? You're it's, like looking at my I, belly button or something. <laughs> no, it's fine. Uh, you're, all, you're in there. It's in the widescreen right now. Okay. All right. <laughs> Uh, like, I'm getting a little self-conscious uh, right now, so okay, I can, it I just can looks like you're it. looking down okay. here. So I'll go up a little oh, bit. Good. There we go. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Brian Neely, I like roller coasters. Good. Probably not on a video screen, though. Yeah, yeah so anybody who had, was, had the reminder set for the other post when I tried to access it with the phone, it didn't show me that I had a scheduled live stream post that I could go live in so we're doing it on the phone and we did it a scrap from scratch one so mm -hmm. you probably got a double notification hopefully that doesn't throw too many people through a loop but yeah it all still show up so Duh. can all i right. you got a spare pair of safety glasses uh yeah right here there you go so yeah all right so i'll let everybody know while everybody's still coming in and stuff while we're getting this billet hot uh the super chat function is enabled for anybody who wants to support this channel directly through that. You can do that as a donation to the channel. Um, when I get this hammer done, I'm going to harden, temper it. I won't do that tonight uh, because the chasing work and the forge work will take most of that three hours to do. And we'll have about 30 minutes of Q&A in there somewhere as I let the hammer cool down so I can lay out the acanthus leaf before chasing. And then... Uh, so, but then after the hammer is done, it'll be handled, and then you'll be able to find it on our uh, eBay account. Mm -hmm. Roughly, probably, it'll be Monday morning uh, next week when that'll hit. Yeah, is when we'll put that up there, and you'll be able to find that uh, listing under Good Cheer Gifts. Good Cheer Gift, yeah. Yeah, Good Cheer Gift. Yeah, on although eBay. we don't have an eBay store, so I'm not sure if you can pull up our listings or not, since we technically don't have an eBay store. So. Is it true? Yeah, I okay. I'm not. I'm well, not they can search the username Good Cheer Gift. Yeah. Um, or you'll also, we'll put the titling of it uh, Chandler Hammer mm -hmm. on there, Chandler Auction Hammer, or something like that. Just type that in and uh, type in his name, and you should be able to find it there to be able to go put your bids. I plan on, once I have it done, to do a formal video with all the specifics and the links and all that good stuff yeah. once it's actually done and complete. So. Yeah, that'll be handy. Yeah. Any questions on that? All right. Don't see any comments on that specifically. Okay, well, what are you commenting? Uh, let's see. Officer Friendly says, glasses, we don't need no stinking glasses. <laughs> and Bodhi says, do you like your eyes, Officer Friendly? <laughs> so, <laughs> I like mine, so I wear safety glasses. <laughs> yeah. Let's see here. Uh, Dan Boyles, the earlier time works for me as it is right after supper here and can go out to the forge after instead of trying to be in from the forge in time to catch the regular show. Okay, good. I'm glad this particular one worked out. Obviously, this won't be the new norm. This is just kind of... Uh, this is a special one, so don't get too used to it, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> Still heating up? Yep. About there. Almost there. Right. Anytime that you're working with tool steel, you need to make sure that you let it come up to temperature fairly slowly and evenly. 
You don't want to shock anything at any point in time in the process. And I'm trying to get mostly just that end heat heated up or hot. Uh, just so I can focus all my blows right there because that's the portion that I need to move. I don't need to move anything in front of that. For the most part. What else? Len Bradstead says, hey Roy and Jess. Hello, hello. John Tompkins says, just getting here. I'll try to catch up on the info. Good, good, good. Yeah, we'll probably just revisit we'll probably, it several times yeah, we'll throughout the live stream. Yeah, we'll revisit it probably several times um, throughout the night. Not only Wood says hello from Germany. Hello, not only Wood. Good to have you here all the way from Germany. Uh, Steve Stokes says, is it okay to use a bench top shop press manually operated for pressing metal when forging? Does anybody know? It is probably okay, although it be very slow. <laughs> um, you know, that would be great for like really very specific isolations that you need to be accurate with. Uh, but as far as regular forging to draw stuff out, it would probably be very, very slow. Let's see. Officer Friendly, what temperature are you shooting for? Um, good question. Uh, I, I go for a bright yellow heat, so I'm not sure what that is exactly. It can vary in, di it, it can vary in different materials. I'm looking for somewhere around the 18 to 1900 degrees for a good forging heat. Chris Balding says, this is a great thing you are doing. Chandler is a great guy. I appreciate the sentiments there, Chris Balding. Thank you. Oh. Lynn Branstead says, I picked up a four inch post vice the other day for 60 bucks. Hey, can't beat that. Mm -hmm. Anytime you can get that under a hundred, that's a great deal, I think, as long as it's in good shape. Thomas Urso says, thanks for responding to my email the other day. You're very welcome. Let's see here, Brett Jones. What's up, Roy and family? It's always a pleasure watching your work. Brett Jones, glad to have you here. Thank you for that. Derwin says, cool, someone talks English. Yeah, pretty much that's the only language we speak here. <laughs> All right. All right. You ready to go over the animal? animal? Sure can. Okay. Let's see. Rigid Ironwork. Started making tools for my small air gun. Great idea, Roy. All right. Better watch it, it's addicting. <laughs> Easy now. It helps if I could aim correctly, huh? is not to mingle and mash the heck out of this. It's to be very controlled with our forging if we can. And the reason why I'm having those skips is I've got my jaws I've got my jaws too close to where I'm trying to taper. I need to back these jaws up a little bit and take another bite. But now we're getting started there. I don't know okay. if they can even see that, but... Yeah, no, yep, it shows. Good. Anthony Chase says, looks hard to move that steel. It's a pretty big chunk. Yeah, it's not too bad. So, uh, just as a <laughs> method of curiosity, the hammer I'm using is one and three quarter pounds. The hammer I'm forging is one and three quarter pounds. They're about equal in mass. Let's see, DDRT2232 says, I want to do that. <laughs> well, it's not hard. <laughs> well, that's a lie. It is hard. It's pretty tough. Uh, but 
Alright, a little bit of practice and a little bit of know-how. I think just about anybody can do it. Derwin says TV shows make it look easy. <laughs> that they do. And then some people make it look hard on TV shows. <laughs> kind of goes both ways there. Yeah. <laughs> they make simple stuff look hard and hard stuff look simple. <laughs> Balance it out. BJ Waters says, hello all. It's been a long time since I could catch a live stream. Hello, BJ Waters. Good to have you here. Hudson Lobo says, Jess did not find it difficult. What's that? <laughs> well, I'm not swinging the hammer, <laughs> so I can't give you an accurate estimate on that. All right. Her page says, watching this is way better than working on the retail order I have to do, LOL. <laughs> <laughs> I hear that. I've got a bunch of retail orders I need to get done, including two custom hammers, a custom center punch, Looks like a um, scribe at some point. I think there's a scribe or something I need to forge. It's center punch. Uh, well, it's a center punch or something mm -hmm. else that some of those want me to do. Mm -hmm. uh, I, don't, I forget. And emails. then uh, I've got basin. A, a 18 inch copper basin I'm working on right now. And a bundle of five roses. And they all have to be done probably by the second week of April, pretty much. Mm -hmm. So. This is still funner than that, though. <laughs> <laughs> Robert Miller says, I found a full-time job. Thanks for the prayers. My Dayton Gas Forge is awesome. Awesome, Robert Miller. Glad to hear that. Praise God for you, buddy. Uncle Buck's Forge, waiting on my wife to get home so we can go out to eat. Just saw you were live. Awesome. I'm glad you can't stop by here for a minute there, Uncle Buck's Forge. We'll probably be here when you're done eating. Depending on whether you're going to a high-end <laughs> restaurant or not. Yeah, it depends how long you'll be there. <laughs> yeah. Steve Stokes, just curious, the light hammer hits to the anvil after hitting the project piece. What does it do to the tool? Nothing, not really. Um, if the tool was softer, so say my hammer had a softer hardness level than what the face of the anvil did, it would leave marks on your hammer face. Likewise, if your hammer face was harder than what your anvil was, you'd leave marks on the anvil. But these are roughly about the same um, Rockwell, I'm guessing, because they don't, they just kind of counterbalance. Plus, the strike to the anvil is nothing more than me resting for a second to be able to flip the piece and look where I want to go next with the next hammer blow. And uh, so it's not a forceful blow by any means. It's more of like a skip and coming back up to it, if that makes sense. Hey, Graham. Glad you could make it. Graham, hello. Shadowcaster asked if you got your moisture problem fixed in the shop. Uh, no. <laughs> Pretty much not. <laughs> um, I just grease everything. I was really looking for uh, if there was any magical cure. I pretty much knew that I was going to kind of be hosed until... That's the kind of the thing you get with an outdoor open air workshop. So yeah. unless you're in a dry climate. Ohio is just wet and humid and the rapid temperature changes. So Those little pinprick holes you see in the wall behind Roy there, they're pretty much all over the building, including the <laughs> ceiling. So, yeah. so moisture's a not a friend of my shop, so but it it's ever present. So, Alright, this is good go. and hot. We'll go back to the anvil. All right. Thank you all for the suggestions on that, though. Okay. tongs shifted forward again. They like to do that as you progress with your forging. They like to shift forward on you a little bit because it's you're kind of hitting it awkward so. Alright. 
and take what's left in this heat and dress this out some. Now some of you may be noticing that it's getting a little bit of fish flipping to it. Yeah, it's a little bit visible. And that's just because this hammer does not have enough apparent mass to make it all the way through the piece. Now if you're working with lighter hammers, like I like to do, the easiest way to dress this up without that fish lipping starting is to come back in here and dress this up to begin with. Put a really steep bevel on it this way and this way before you start drawing it down. That'll counteract that fish flipping problem. So now you can see, hopefully you can see that. Uh -huh. yep. There's a pucker right there in the center. And you can see where I cut it off with a uh, angle grinder right here, hopefully. Mm -hmm. That is not a crack or a cold shut. That is where it got cut off on an angle grinder where the two ends of the cut didn't match up. Oh, okay. Is what that's from. That's not going to be a problem. I'm going to dress this back a little bit and then I'll grind that out. That won't be an issue. Uh, so that's not a stress riser or anything. It's just where the two lines didn't match. So the next heat, I've got this pretty much drawn out almost to where I want it. So the next heat, I'm going to bring it out and I'm going to dress this fish flipping back. Mm -hmm. And then after that, point of dressing the fish flipping back as you see that's a pretty pleasing shape mm -hmm. yeah. yeah to the eye there um, after I dress that fish flipping back then I'll just take it while it's hot over to the belt grinder belt sander and just sand off any of that uh, cut line that I see there mm -hmm. okay in it so that's where we'll be so next heat bring it out and I'll adjust that fish lip all righty see uh lynn bradstead what happened to chandler if you go check out his most recent video at his channel he tells about it um he's got a video on basically he's he's losing his uh shop and his home where he runs yeah he pretty much had kind of an open-ended argument you know what happens when you post your mind on facebook um apparently one of his landlords uh that rent his building to him was on one of his posts and had a high disagreement with him about his stance on the Second Amendment, right? And so they got in a little tissy and pretty much served him a 30-day eviction notice. So that's kind of what happened to him. I don't know the full story. Obviously, I just hear about it from his video. So go check out his video on it. Um, all I know is he's living currently my worst nightmare, which would be to be evicted and because I rent here myself. Uh, mm -hmm. And for those of you who don't know, my landlord died um, not even less uh, not two, even two weeks two ago. Two to three about, weeks ago. Yeah, about two weeks ago mm -hmm. it was. About two weeks ago. And so that put us in a scramble, and we mm -hmm. were wor quite worried about that ourselves. Mm -hmm. Things are kind of calmed down here for right now at the moment, so... We're hoping everything's still kosher with us being here, but uh, that's what prompted me to do this video because I can actually do something to help Chandler out. And a lot of people doing just a little, putting a dollar in his tip jar or something like that really changes that man's situation. Mm -hmm. So this is the least I can do. Let's see, let me try to go through a few of these comments. I'm getting a little behind. Uh, Brett Jones, if you are interested in ordering a custom hammer from us, from Roy, uh, just send, him a, send us an email, ChristCenteredForge at gmail.com, and we can discuss the details with you there. Uh, Corey Shire? Or they can also go to our website, uh, our, yes. our actual business website, yes. um, which is ChristCenteredIronworks. Yes, ChristCenteredIronworks.com is our website, and if you look under the shop section of it, we have a few examples of Roy's custom hammers there. So, uh, Corey Shire, glad you made it. Yeah, good to have you here, Corey Shire. Derwin, we are making a cross peen hammer. Yep, making a cross peen hammer, a decorative cross peen hammer. It's going to have chasing done in the side of it. <laughs> JG Clark, 45, 
Uh, we're planning on having the hammer up for auction on Monday. And we yep. will do a video post with the details on it when we do that, so anybody who's looking for it can find it. Yep. And that auction is going to be a fairly short auction. We're not sure whether we're going to run it for a week or if we're going to only run it for about three days. I think you get the choice of either. Yeah. Um, and then, so that way we can get that sign sealed and delivered and get Chandler some funds and on time. Let's see, and we had quite a few comments. Herb Page, Steve Stokes, and Bob Smith says, love the pointer. <laughs> glad you all enjoy the pointer. I'm so glad I made that thing. I thought, I'm like, Roy, you're being ridiculous. You're being ridiculous. You don't need a pointer. And I'm like, no, I'm making the pointer finger. Yes, that way he's not like, scorching it's his hilarious, fingertips. It's so. <laughs> hilarious. Uh, all right. Yeah. So the... Uh, um, Oh, one other thing. I want to let everybody know who just got here, if you have a burning question and we're missing your question time and time again, a great way to get that question answered is the Super Chat uh, mm -hmm. feature or donation feature. Uh, it will help support this channel and allow us to answer your question. Um, we try to get to everybody's questions, but they do fly on right by sometimes. Yes, they so. do. Yeah, we got 54 people in here right now, so we're doing good. Good to have 54 people in here. Uh, Champ Ironworks, no, we do not have Patreon currently. If you would like to support us, you can go to blacksmithpdfs.com and purchase the plans for, from us. Or um, we also have a Teespring where you can buy merchandise that supports us too. Yep. Um, that's two examples. <laughs> Let's see. Uh, oh, and our shirts from last week. I actually created a design for anybody who is in our live stream last week. Um, <laughs> the flavor of the day. We can't all be the flavor of the day. I created that shirt. So yep. anybody who wants to see that, um, I'll have to. The link was supposed to be in the description of this video, but uh, again, because we had the issue with the scheduling of the live stream, I'll have to put it in the next video. So just in the future, just look down in the description of, of our videos, and I will have the updated link. Alright, we're good and hot. Alright. Alright, so I'm going to stand this up on the hammer face. And I'm going to hammer out just the peen. I'm going to come straight down on it. Try to nail out that little pucker mark there. I'm not trying to hit real hard. We're just trying to push those lips back into order there. And now we'll dress that out a bit more. You can keep shooting off questions, Jess. Alrighty, sure. Um, not a big silent moment. Okay. Uh, Bob Smith he sent us a dollar ninety nine super chat. Thank you so very much for that. Yes. That helps us out. And he asked the holes drilled help punching question mark. Yes, they help. So instead of me having to get a dress out, a lot of distortion. So whenever you punch a hole, you're going to get a lot of swelling and distortion in it. The problem with that is. I'm going to be chasing a design into the side of this. So after that design's chased, I'm not going to be able to dress out a bunch of distortion because I'm going to ruin the design. Mm -hmm. So I'm removing material, which allows me a straight access point through both sides to get a nice straight hole down through there. I'm removing a lot of the material so I only have those thin little webs to deal with when I punch the material down through. Now I'll still have a little dressing and drifting to do, but I can take care of most of that with a rawhide mallet or a wooden hammer as not to deform my designs I'm going to be putting on the side of the hammer. If you don't do that, if you don't drift this, you're going to get a lot of swell in here. And if you try to dress that out, you can't do it. And it's harder to chase the design in after the hammer has been drifted because the walls want to collapse on you. Mm -hmm. 
If that makes sense. The walls of the eye. Yeah, that well, makes sense. Um, we have a question from Rich and Ironworks. Okay. It says, can I send you one of my items to include in your auction, auction for Chandler? Um, so if you email us, we could discuss it more there and kind of uh, see what um, what you have in mind. And that way we can figure out the details. Uh, Bob Smith, can't, let's see, can't punch first, then chase. You may have answered that already. If you punch it first, then chase, the problem is, is I'm hot chasing. So if it was cold work, yes, you could punch first and then chase around that. But since it's hot chasing that I'm going to be doing, no, you cannot. Because what will happen is you'll have to fool with having the drift inserted, and then it likes to loosen up, and then you lose it, and the walls collapse. The eyes of the hole collapse on you. It creates an awkward situation. It really just depends on what type of uh, decoration you're going to be undergoing. Mm -hmm. So now I need to come out and do a couple cleanup heats on this. I got most of that dressed back. That's good. I'm going to go ahead and do a couple cleanup heats on this and just kind of tap around on it and get it all nice and square and plumb. But that's getting to be pretty nice, I think. Yeah, the shape is looking nice. Yep. You're able to take care of most of that fish lip. All right, Rigid Ironworks, we'll keep an e uh, eye out for your email on that. Yep, thank you, Rigid Ironworks, by the way. Thank you. Uh, Graham Pepper, what does rawhide mallet smell like? <laughs> uh, it smells about like burning your own finger. <laughs> you know what that smells like? It's pretty much the same smell. I'm sure probably everybody is familiar with getting burnt. Let's see, uh, chasing, there's a question. Yes. Thomas Erso, for a newbie, what is chasing? Okay, chasing metalwork. It, well, this could be, well, let's not get hung up on terminology because chasing, there's repose and chasing work where you've made a depression and then you're refining the lines of that depression. That is called repose and chasing work. You're refining that design in repose work. But the form of chasing that I am doing is essentially to move metal. Essentially is the, that's what I was taught by Tom Latine. That's what he does. That's what he calls it. It's uh, chasing metal work. So uh, it's pushing metal to where you need it, essentially. That's the definition of chasing. So I'm applying it in the sense of in a thick material, I'm moving the surface material where it needs to be to form a design or a pattern. So. John Tompkins, uh, to answer your question. Mm -hmm. Talk up, I can't hear you, Abby. Oh, okay, okay I'll go All check right. on that in a second. All right. Sorry, All right, one of the kids are asking, <laughs> they're playing. Uh, John Tompkins, they say if you go through PayPal with your Super Chat, the presenters receive more percentage. I'm still trying to figure out about Super Chat, just so you know. Um, yes, so if you do a Super Chat, uh, YouTube gets 30%, versus if you just send us a PayPal donation, um, PayPal gets 3%. So uh, technically, yes, we do get a larger percentage if you send it via PayPal. And yep. we do have it set up where we you can... We have a PayPal donate button. Yes, yeah. we do. That's on our YouTube channel under the About Us section. Um, so, yes. So if you'd like to support us in that way, you know, we'd really appreciate it. Yep. It's another great way of doing it. So. All right. I will go... Do you want me to just leave it set here for a second and I'll go check on check on them? Um, yeah, let's, let's okay. go check on the kids real quick. And All I'll right. just... I'll just uh, flip around and they can talk to me for a second while this stays warm. Okay, all right. All right, guys, I'm going to flip you around here for a second. Woo! There we are. Up close and personal. How's that action for you? Oh, roll you all the way around. All right, here I am. Just had to go check on the kids for a minute, so excuse us for that. Keep this fire hot and see what we got here. Understood. Thanks. Cool. <laughs> Just waiting someone to say you have 30 minutes left. <laughs> That's going to be a while. <laughs> oh, you're welcome, John Tompkins. Oh. Let's see here. Pickaboo Central said P 
Pika Mob Central said, Hey Roy, finally on spring break and ready to watch. A nice demonstration. Well, glad to have you here. Brett Jones. This is, this is great. What are you doing for Chandler? What metal are you using for the hammerhead? Uh, 79 Spirit. Uh, what I am use what I'm doing for Chandler is I'm creating a decoratively chased hammer that I'm going to auction off uh, in his benefit. And there'll be a whole video later on once I get it done that tells all the details on that and how you can get a hold of it. And it'll be over on eBay that I'll be auctioning it off. Um, and then the metal I'm using is a 1045 series. Glad to have you here, Bob Smith. Oh. Glad you could catch this one. You forging from start to finish. Yes, I am. Forging from start to finish is what I will be doing, Mr. Coffee, sir. Oh. Keep you on in the background. Cool, s, s Smithing. Thank you for keeping me on in the background. Appreciate that. Yep. Yep, Chandler Dickinson is a YouTube blacksmith who uh, got an eviction notice, so... He hasn't been evicted yet from the shop, but uh, he's definitely got a notice and not on s such hot terms with the, uh, the landlords there. So uh, you can go check out his video on that. It's under the titling of Bad News. Um, Forge Side Chat. You can go check that out. Right. Yeah. Boy, I tell you what, Jessica leaves and everybody goes quiet. Quiet as church mice. All right. Oh. That is awesome, uh, Debaca Maker. I'm glad that the Forge of Dime worked good, so. Yeah, James Lewis, that is messed up. Oh. Graham Pe Pepper, thank you for the $10 Australian there, buddy. I really appreciate that. I think it's Australian, so. Big Dog Forge, we'll see you in a little bit. So I'll still be here, I'm sure. I'll be here till 8 p.m. tonight. So this is going to be about a three-hour long demonstration, so. Appreciate that. <laughs> Sorry you're on my ride home right now. That's all right. Oh, like I said, this is going to be a long one, so if you guys need to go get a Slurpee, you need to go do whatever you got to do, go do that. You know what I mean? Just go do that. Um, uh, you know, it's going to be a long one. You're going to see a lot of my face. You're going to see a lot of me talking. A lot of me doing a lot of cool work on this hammer. I'm really looking forward to it. Yeah, mmm, Slurpee. Bring me one, James Lewis. Bring me one. Corey Shire, uh, no, the hand vise is not done. That one's going to be a little bit before it's done. Uh, I'm hoping to speed along the process and go into some of the other uh, elements of the forging. And then the decoration part, I'll release that in live streams and bits and pieces. This was just a special one, kind of special turnaround. It's uh, There was a need, and I, I saw where I could uh, pitch in, pitch in to help. Graham Pepper. Yeah, it's $7.40 American. I appreciate it anyhow. Thank you very much. Oh, every little bit helps. It helps. Uh, just to give you an example, our last Super Chat, we had somebody nice enough to take and drop us, um, drop us a $50 Super Chat. And then there was a bunch of other people that, that took and uh, dropped us a bunch of uh, Super Chat money and things like that. And so we got like... I want to say it was $64, $65, one of those things. Um, we, we had something like that on our last live stream. And, uh, you know, we don't get all that. It's a 70-30 split. But, like, that really helps out because that's about a quarter of the way for me getting a new microphone. So this way I can have a better uh, audio experience for everybody who's trying to listen to me talk and hammer at the same time. Uh, there's some videos that it's just not conducive for me to talk because what the camera, my new camera does, 
is it actually quiets my voice down and quiets, dampers the hammer sounds down. And so then everything gets almost muted to where you can't hear it. I don't know if anybody's picked that up. So whenever I got a lot of loud hammering to do, I just don't talk. And I like to explain while I'm doing stuff, so. Chris Frost, I am, what are you going to make? I am making a hammer for Chandler. So, well, not for Chandler, to be auctioned off for Chandler's benefit, so. <laughs> BJ Waters, yep. I do like, I do love the Woodwright shop, so. Yep, there's been several voiceovers lately just because of that. The noise, and it just dampers everything out. Um, the last voiceover video I did, you know, I was doing the comparison type stuff outside, and I had a little bit of a cross breeze, and without it, the, the camera just picks that up, and it just bleeds out my voice, bleeds out the air voice. So let me, uh, let me bring this out. I'm just going to kind of tilt you all around so you can see me at the anvil. All I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be cleaning up the faces, I like to have a nicely clean forged finish if I can. Let's see here. Oh, uh, Champ Ironworks, how am I getting the money to Chandler Dickinson? I have not arranged that out right with him just yet. Uh, this was a spur of the moment thing. Most likely I will mail him a check if he gives me my address. That way it's most direct and there's no fees. When I sell the when I sell the hammer on eBay, I'm covering all the seller fees and the shipping cost of the hammer. So that's what I'll be doing on my end. And then for Chandler's end of it, uh, he'll just have to provide me his address so I can send him a check. Um, and that's probably how that'll work out. So now, if you had a striker. Now would be the prime time to have a striker with a flatter to just even everything up. I don't, so I'm just going to take my time with some nice light hammer tapping. Let's just get everything straight, make sure everything's in line. Take out any sort of hammer marks or swells I see. And like I said, you could do this by yourself, uh, obviously. I'm doing it here by myself right now, but uh, it's not too difficult. You just got to take your time with it. Focus on nice, clean forging over getting it done. So your work speaks for you, and it speaks volumes. So focus on good, clean forging techniques. And at this heat, it's all just finish up stuff. Just trying to get puckers or anything out of it. Right. Yeah, so this right here is just a good finishing heat that I'm doing it at. It looks like a black heat. Maybe it looks a little hotter on camera, uh, but it's a good heat to do all your finish work, get it good and scale free. And we're pretty much there on the on this aspect of it. It doesn't look like I'm doing much, but I'm not trying to move a lot of steel at this point. I'm just trying to move the surface finish of the steel to where I want it, to clean stuff back up and get good crisp lines. So at this heat, it doesn't have to be very hot either. Now, you may be wondering why would you do that if you're going to... I can't read the comments right here. Sorry, guys. Um, but uh, Jessica just got back, so maybe she'll help me with that. Um, the reason why you want to get this as clean and flat and square as possible is so this way when we lay out our design cold, I say cold, it'll be fairly warm still yet, but I'm going to let it cool now at this point. Uh, when I lay out my design cold, you're working with a nice flush and flat surface. If you don't do that, 
what you end up with is you have this uh, uneven surface and then your layout lines get all askew. And by the time you start chasing on it, stuff is going to wibble wobble all over the place on you and that's definitely not desirable. So now we're going to set this off to the side here somewhere to cool fairly lightly. Um, I'm going to go ahead and heat it back up once just to relax it a bit because I've been doing some cold hammering on it. I'm going to heat it up to like a cherry red and then I'm just going to set it over here on this anvil block uh, to just let it cool. So All right. um, you want to flip that around honey? Yes, so I will. You, you can answer questions and give people a heads up and say hey. Yeah. All right. Let me adjust it first so maybe it doesn't look so crazy when I flip the camera around. I can't hear. Okay, what I wasn't saying? I wasn't reading anything out loud oh, yet. Okay. I was just trying to make make it a smooth ride. Alright. So Alright. Uh where can I find a German style anvil like yours? I've searched everywhere with no luck. Now it's from Brett Jones. Okay, Brett Jones, I found this anvil on eBay. Uh, they come up from time to time. They do run high because of the weight that's in factor, but if you cost that weight out to what it is per pound, it's actually cheaper than like 100 or 150 pound anvils, usually. Uh, only reason for that being is if you buy something, Olga here is 465 pounds. Uh, so, you know, when you're paying three or four dollars a pound at 465 pounds, you can guess that's a lot of money. And so a lot of people don't have that to invest in an anvil. So that's cheaper. Whereas if you can find right now 150 pound anvils and people are wanting to clear up to $6 a pound or $6.50 a pound is some of the highest prices I've seen on eBay. Uh, so eBay is not a cheap place to find anvils. Every now and then you'll luck out on one. Uh, I was fortunate enough to find this one and I had been shopping for an anvil like this for about four years. So. Definitely not easy to find. <laughs> and occasionally, occasionally, you can find them at antique malls. Occasionally. Yeah. But usually, if it's rust, it looks like this. Right. To the owner. So, yep. be careful. Yeah, I did do a video a while back on uh, some different ways of finding anvils. But again, that wasn't specifically German style anvils. That's just kind of anvils in general. So... Uh, let me go back a little more here and see what we got. Um, Chris Frost, do you have a video on you making your hammer eye punch and drift? Hammer eye punch. Yes, I have I have videos on uh, most everything that I've done as far as eye punches, drifts, uh, things like that. They should be located on the channel. Let's see here. Um... I saw there's some questions about currency, guys. I'm not sure since you're talking back and forth if that got sorted out or not. Uh, if you still have questions, let us know down below and yep. so we can rehash that. Let's see. Uh, we are making a cross peen hammer. Yep. For anybody who's new. Let's see. I See, there were some comments here on uh, Roy Underhill. Some of you guys enjoy watching yep, his videos. Yeah. Right yeah. Yep. All That's... right. I'm gonna clean this off here. I'm just gonna let it relax now. Ooh, well, that's not very relaxing, <laughs> is it? No. Oh well, it'll survive that much impact. <laughs> All right, we're just gonna let this relax a little bit so that way that surface tension is nice and soft for chasing. All right. Hello everybody, yes, I am back. I'm sure you caught me sneaking in the corner of the camera there. Yeah. Uh, How am I doing on time, by the way? You are 49 minutes in. So Boom! You're... I hit it right on mark. Yeah. I was hoping. I was hoping to have the forging, rough forging, there done within one hour. So, so far we've accomplished that. Mm -hmm. So I'm happy. Graham, thank you for the 10 Australian dollars. That's awesome, bud. 
Yep. He donated that earlier. Okay. So, yeah, I, didn't I think know. I'm all caught up. Okay, you're you caught up. You don't have to go up. From there okay. down, I've fairly okay. caught up. Yep. Uh, vice. What is the vice progress? Somebody had asked. Yep, I already answered that one, so go down. Okay. Scroll all the way down to the bottom. Let's answer the I will. Ones. Yeah, I was at the bottom. I had to see us revisiting what. Okay. Uh, Bob Smith got my Colombian anvil for a trade for parking my car, parking a car in my yard for a year. <laughs> that works out, I guess. Hey, that works out great. <laughs> <laughs> Was this kind of like a hostage situation? You parked your car in somebody else's lawn for a year? <laughs> <laughs> and they were like, please leave. Oh. You want to check on the kids, honey? They're, sure. They got they, tractor coming in. They were inside, yeah. That's oh, they're, why oh been, they're inside yeah. right now. Yeah, okay. I've been freaked out earlier because he heard the tractor and he gets scared of tractors driving around. So Okay, good. Uh, let's see, Ben Toombs. Oh yeah, home and no crashes. Yeah, you gotta watch out watching YouTube videos while you're in your car, Ben Toombs. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta be very, very careful of that. We'll wait for this tractor to pass here. Right. So. Uh, Manga12, huh, the live stream is early. Yes, we made an announcement earlier on the community tab. Um, Tonight's live stream is a long live stream, so we started it a little bit early. Yep. Plus, Roy was invited to a bonfire, so he's uh, trying to jet out of here in time for that as well. Yep. To hang out with a friend of mine I haven't hung out with in a long time, so I want to see if I can. He asked me to a bonfire, and I said, sure, I'll see what mm -hmm. I can do. Bob Smith said about the car, no, the guy didn't want his kid's junker in his yard. <laughs> so he got to sit in your yard instead. <laughs> That's not a bad trade, then. Oh. Let's see, James Lewis, gonna get your drink on, Roy. Yeah. Spark. <laughs> yeah, I need my spark. <laughs> yeah. yeah? You read my mind. Get I was like, seat. where's that? There it is. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Let's see, Manga 12. Yeah, some neighbors had a bonfire over here two nights ago, although it may have been so they could get rid of paper. <laughs> yeah? Yeah, I gotta burn off trash from time to time. Yeah. Well, the way we do it in Ohio, we do it at night, and then we make sure it reaches the heavens. No. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, when we it's do taller, a bonfire. It's taller so. than the farmhouses out here. <laughs> yeah. Let's see. Uh, Hudson Lobo. Anvils in Brazil are rare. Many blacksmiths end up using train rails to hammer on top. Yep. Yeah, people do that here in the U.S. too. Yep. Well, you know, you got to use what you can get, you know? Some people say rail track anvils aren't no good. I'm not a fan of rail track anvils, but like if that's all you can get, man, you have to use what you can. Um, you know, if you can get a large block of steel and hard surface it, that makes a little better mass underneath the hammer blows than what a rail track anvil will. But, you know, smith on what you got. Smith mm -hmm. on what you got. Uh, John Coffee says the ice starts at midnight tonight, Roy. The ice so starts heard. at midnight. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so uh, another reason for me getting off early. So I'm only going to be at my buddy's bonfire for about an hour. I say an hour, but we all know how long I talk. <laughs> um, I'm going to try to only be there for an hour because tomorrow at noon, uh, I'm supposed to go help and shovel roughly about 22 tons of coal. So A, a bunch of other guys. Too. Yeah, a bunch <laughs> of other guys are showing up, but still... It's 22 tons of coal. There's a lot of work <laughs> to get that into the club's building. So, Jason Hill, where can you get train rails from? I have tried the train company, but they just let them sit on the side of the track for years. <clears throat> uh, the best place, the best place to get train rail from that I have found is at your local scrapyard or a scrap supplier or somebody that deals in junk metals, cars, things like that. Sometimes they'll get in a section of it from the railroad that'll be scrapped and they'll have a small selection of it stuck out in the weeds somewhere. And, uh, you know, not all train rail, not all railroad track was actually produced for the railroad company. You know, I mean, there's other industries uh, that used rail, you know, in their yards to move materials and material handling and stuff. And so you can find it there at scrap yards. Um, one of the problems is a lot of people's a lot of people's scrap yards 
don't allow you to go pick through their stuff. That's a big problem. It's a big insurance thing. Uh, so if you have any problems with that, the best thing for you to do is get on a daily occurrence with somebody. Let them know what you're doing, that you're trying to find a rail track for your blacksmithing, or maybe even ask for an anvil. Sometimes they have an anvil as a doorstop somewhere. Mm -hmm. Yeah. As I have found personally at a scrapyard one. So Yep, yep. Yeah, you're pretty lucky yep. if that happens. You'd be amazed at how much you can find if you just ask. Uh, ask around and, uh, you know, don't do it in a sleazy way. Like, really be a genuine person, mm -hmm. you know, about it. So, mm -hmm. uh, be willing to pay for it, whatever they ask, and then they'll keep you in mind later on, too, mm -hmm. um, if any for other, other things that might pop up. Yeah, yeah, okay. definitely. Good. Skyler Neal, I'm a beginning blacksmith and have recently discovered your channel. Thank you for all the great info you have given me. Awesome. Well, I'm glad to have you, Skyler, Skyler Neal. Is that what it is? Yep, that's correct. Okay, well, I'm glad to have you a part of the channel. Um, I'm glad you're getting a good amount of information from this. Thank you very much for that. Graham, Jessica, I see your Teespring link, but I only see the logo t-shirts. Graham, make sure you clicked on the right one. It's not quite at the very bottom. It's, it says new right in front of it. And then, uh, yeah, it says new. And then it says specifically um, flavor of the day t-shirt. So yes, uh, for anybody who's curious what he said, while I was inside checking on the kids, I went ahead mm -hmm. and uh, copied the information down to the description of this video. So if you refresh your page, it'll show up now if you were looking for any of the information we were discussing earlier. Awesome. Uh, I need Chris, to grab my chasing tools while okay. you talk. Go ahead. Okay, sure. Go ahead. What else? Questions? Uh, yes. Chris Frost, what metal do you use for your punch? I use, for all of my stuff, I either use coil spring or 1045. Um, ideally, this stuff, what I found, and uh, I'll put this out there. I've used 1045 for my punches, for my hammer eye uh, punches and drifts. The drifts aren't a problem, the punches are. You need to go with something like a 1095 or a 1080 or 1084, something along those lines. Uh, something that has a lot more carbon to it so it can resist the heat a little bit better um, when it goes through because they temper pretty quick, especially going through heavy hammerhead material. And the best thing you can do if you're going to do hammers and stuff, especially for production, find something that's an air hardening tool steel. Mm -hmm. That's the best. Save yourself the headache of always having to re, or re temp, you know, re harden and temper your tools, and uh, just get something that's an air hardening tool steel. So. Bob Smith says, "Congrats on the 18,000 subs, you two. Almost there. Awesome. Yes, Thank you. We are really close. Thank you for the congratulations on that." For the Thank you all for subscribing. So without yes. you, that wouldn't be possible. Mm -hmm. Very thank true. you for everybody who shares our stuff and our content and all that good things. Mm -hmm. Thank you guys so much, yep. guys and gals. Guys and gals. That's yep. right. We want to make sure we definitely give the gals a shout out. They do their part. For sure. Let's see. For the Honor Forge, I got some rail track and I'm hoping to make it into a few tools. Not sure when I'll get to it though. He, he also said he um, punctured his hand cutting palm fronds. So mm. we hope your hand gets better soon. Yeah, Hopefully, hope your, hopefully yeah. it wasn't severe. Yeah, uh, no one... That's going to be an interesting video coming up. Hopefully if his hand's not damaged too badly. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, I'm doing an alternative fuel series. And with that series, I am going to be... Sorry guys, my minder is in like two different places right now. Let me my tools out here. With that alternative fuel series, uh, I was asked by uh, the guy who punctured his hand. <laughs> mm -hmm. For the Honor Forge? Yeah, for the Honor Forge, if I wanted to take and have some palm fronds, fronds. Mm -hmm. uh, fronds shipped to me that I could use to show a comparison. Yeah, uh, try a different uh, alternative fuel. A different fuel. alternative forge fuel, so. Mm -hmm. Which is definitely awesome. Yeah. Let's see. We have a $5 super chat from Arishi Sun. Arishi Sun, thank you. Yes. Thank you very much. It says, hi, my name is Rishi. I am 12 years old, and I recently became a blacksmith. Where do you get rivets to make tongs? 
also in range team. Good to have you here. You've got two choices. Um, there are some there are some blacksmith suppliers. Uh, there's a blacksmith depot, I believe, sells yep. yep. pre-made sell rivets. Um, and then if you watch the channel there, which is it's awesome that you're 12 years old. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Thank you for being a part of the channel. Um, even at such a young age, that's great to hear that you're getting into it. Uh, there's either regular, you could get those, buy them store-bought, or you can watch some of the videos that I have on the channel where I have made rivets in different little rivet sets and shown you how to make the tooling to do so. If yes. you want to make your own homemade rivets for tongs. Yes, we have a whole playlist on that where I organized yeah. it, so it'll be easy to, the easiest way to find it is under the playlist section of our channel. Uh, Brett Jones, what do you mean by air hardening? Air hardening, like an H13 series, uh, it's a it's a tool steel that lends itself to it just hardens naturally. When you buy it, it's annealed, it's pre-annealed. When you in the bar format, you forge it out to whatever shape, and then you just let it air cool, and it hardens up to a specific hardness range based upon how hot you brought it to. Uh, previously to letting it cool off naturally. Roman Seppolo, what kind of wood do you use for your handles? Oh, by the way, that's a very generic answer. It's a whole lot more complicated than that, but for basic blacksmithing purposes, that's as much information as you need on it for, for the most part, unless you're getting into complex tooling. What was the question? I'm sorry. Uh, the question was, what kind of wood do you use for your handles? Uh, the handles, they're just a hickory handle that I buy from a little hardware store up front of my place so that's that's what I go with they're a factory bought hammer handle uh, I would like I'm a I'm just a shoddy woodworker I'm horrible at woodworking I'm not gonna lie uh, I'm at this stage of my life I don't really care anymore I used to be bad I used to care about that but I don't anymore I'm just a I'm not a shoddy woodworker so most likely I'll stick with store-bought handles Mm -hmm. for all my blacksmithing needs. I've heard like stuff like, uh, I'll say Jorge is good, uh, things like ironwood and some other type handles are a good thing to have, uh, but I stick with what I know, which is easy enough to buy one for four bucks. Yeah, yeah that does. There had been a few comments, I'll just go ahead and read one of the, these off about the railroad. Um, Yes, Champ Ironwork says, for your information, the US, uh, in the U.S., stealing from a rail railway is a felony and is considered interfering with interstate commerce. It's a federal offense. So, yep. so don't go torch cutting a railroad track yeah, that's still in use happy. or that's laying on the side of the rail. Um, James Lewis, how would walnut handles work out? I imagine they'd work out just fine. Again, I'm not a guy, I'm not a wood guy, so... Uh, Ask that to people in the comment section. They, it would be a lot better off. I'm yeah. sure there's a lot of guys out there that would be able to tell you better than I could on on wood, specific wood usage. Mm -hmm. I would imagine walnut would work fine. But. Let's see. Uh, somebody had asked Rishi where they're from. From Canada. Awesome. So that is cool. We have some Canadian friends. So that's awesome. See John Coffey. He asked if the cold delivery is tomorrow. Yes, it is. Yep, it is tomorrow. They bumped it up till noon though, not not early morning. Yep, it was gonna be like early, starting at eight, like eight thirty, and now they moved it to noon. Um, I'm probably still gonna leave out a little early, and uh, so I can just be there. I've got a 45 minute drive doing five miles an hour over so it's about an hour drive for me so Skyler Neal do you use coal charcoal or coke I use coal by Mutimus coal is what I'm using in my forge currently mm -hmm. all right I'm gonna go over here we're gonna try to lay this out see okay. how well we can do it's it. only been 15 minutes or 10 under I think. 15 minutes yeah Yeah, it's a little hot yet. Yeah. Uh, okay, I'll give it a break. I'll okay. give it still a little bit more. Yeah, what I need to do is I need to let this cool down to a point uh, that it's warm to the touch, that I can put my design on it and start it cold. So I have my layout lines, and then I come back in while it's hot, and I hot chase it. And 
that hot chasing will allow me to get more dramatic depth to the hammer. Otherwise, cold chasing, I would create a lot of stress risers trying to get as much depth and detail as I'm trying to get. So there's another reason. Uh, a lot of times, let me just put this out there and then we'll take some more questions. A lot of times you may see a particular smith do something and you may not necessarily agree with it right off. I challenge you to think a little bit, why would they be doing that? Do they have an alternative motive? And kind of ask the question behind the question, so to speak. You know, so, so the first part, you may see somebody else do something completely different than me. But I have different life experiences and different experiences working with different types of materials. They may be working with a 5160. Well, it's going to have different treatment than a 1045 steel. So um, if they're really well versed in it, I'm not well versed in 5160. So uh, I couldn't tell you. You know, it would be something that I'd have to learn and practice and learn all of its quirks that it has. So that's something to keep in mind uh, if you're new to blacksmithing, if you're getting opinions or how to do something. If something's not working out for you and you saw a certain guy do the same thing that you just did, but yours didn't turn out, it may be because he might be using a different material than you. He might have had a different pre-method that he was doing. So in this case, just as I talked about the stress riser, that's a freebie there. You are putting, you're chiseling, and you're creating a stress riser. You're pinching the grain of the steel with this cutting edge here. And so that's creating a stress riser. So you got to do that hot if you're going to do it, and you're going to try to move that material more. So I'm laying out the lines cold, and then I'm using this while it's hot to be able to push that material without getting stress risers. Because at the end of this whole thing, I've got to heat this thing up and quench it. And when I take it to critical and I quench it, the last thing I want is the thing to blow apart on me in a bunch of segmented pieces. Because I created undue stress in the material. Ben Toom says, great advice. How was Bruce Lee's philosophy for Jeet Kune Do? Not all moves work the same for everybody in the same way. Yeah, there you huh. go. You're almost cool. quoting a, almost quoting a video. <laughs> Bruce Lee, I don't know. <laughs> I never watched any of Bruce Lee's. I, I watched the movies of mm -hmm. Bruce Lee, but I didn't watch any of his, his uh, inspirational stuff. <laughs> so. Roman Sepalat, I tried making a ladle off of your ladle video, but I made the seam on the top of the handle. I will never make that mistake again. But great video. I am just yeah. bad at following. Ha ha. <laughs> oh, yeah. So, so, so when you do that, yeah, that's, uh, and that's one of those things. I've done that too. Don't feel bad. I've gotten it. I gotten busy. I, I formed it. Didn't even think about it. Looked at it. I'm like, what did you just do, Roy? Mm -hmm. And at that point, you done lost it. So just <laughs> go set it across the shop and mm -hmm. shake your head <laughs> and uh, move on. Let's see. We have a dollar ninety nine super chat from Bob Smith. He says, "Love how well you teach." Thank you so much, Bob Smith. Thank you for the super chat and supporting the channel. It does help out. Anthony Chase says, "Does the anvil pull heat out of the piece faster than air cooling?" Uh, yes, it does. So that anvil acts as a big heat sink. It acts as a big heat sink. Um, and so if you notice, I didn't want to lay it down flat. If I would have laid it down flat, I would have pulled more heat out of one side of the tool quicker than the other, and I don't want that. I put it on the face because the hammer face is going to have further things done to it, but I need all this to be as soft and comfortable and loosey-goosey as it can be for the chasing portion of it. This up here needs to be soft, not the hammer face. So I went ahead and let it pull the heat out of the hammer face first, which means this will be a little tougher than what this will be up here. Mm -hmm. So it does draw that heat out. Let's see. Steve Stokes, what metal is the hammer being made from? It is being made from 1045 carbon steel. High carbon steel. Some people don't call it high carbon steel. It's just a carbon steel. Cool steel. Graham, thanks for stopping by. We'll catch you later, yep. bud. Thank you, Graham. Stop on by if you get a chance again. Hope you have a great evening. Herb Page, so while we wait for it to cool, can you dance for us, Roy? LOL. <laughs> <laughs> Once again, I don't do that well on peer pressure, so no. 
<laughs> Let's see, Hoji Forge. I don't know if anyone's officially invited you, but we'd love to have you guys joining our Forge Forge at Ford Facebook group. You already uh, live the ideal we strive for. Awesome. Um, I have not been formally invited yet. I don't think. I don't. No. I don't remember. Somebody mentioned it being, last live stream. But somebody did mention it. It was mentioned. Yeah. Okay, it was mentioned. I. I don't know if I was formally invited, but thank you very much for the honor on that. Uh, I am not on Facebook, however. I run it, and then if Jessica you guys have is, questions. she she gets on Facebook. I took a year off Facebook during the last presidential election, um, and then yeah, I have no desire going back Facebook. Pretty much. <laughs> Somebody says you just were. You, uh, yes, Jan Byron works. Um, yeah. yeah, I answer what questions I can, and then if I need to, I address Roy with them, but technically it's my fingers typing the response. Yeah, so, so, so <laughs> Jessica is my avatar on my Facebook account, essentially. Get it? Sure. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see. Uh, Brett Jones, Roy, did you ever consider doing smithing classes like Brian Brazil, etc.? I travel from New York for your classes. Well, that's pretty awesome. Uh, yes. In fact, that's something I'm working on uh, right now still. I'm working on putting together a class course schedule. And in fact, I have a potential facility lined up that would allow me um, to be able to use the facility to actually teach out of. So we'll have to see how that goes. It, Like I said, it's all kind of up in the air. They kind of have to approve and like the teaching structure and stuff. Uh, but I do teach through SOFA. Um, I teach occasional classes through there. I actually just te taught a tong making workshop. Yep. It was a tong making workshop. We didn't get enough interest in my burner build, gas forge burner build workshop, just because it was an expensive burner, I think was more or less the issue mm -hmm. there. Mm -hmm. It's just an expensive burner to build. So, so we didn't get enough interest, so we had to cancel that workshop. Um, but uh, yeah, I'm hoping to teach more classes there at SOFA and uh, take advantage of their facilities up there. Uh, to you know, further the club and be able to further education. And in fact, one of the things I'm hoping to do, and this is kind of a long-winded reply, you'll have to forgive me for this, one of the things I'm hoping to do is actually transition out of doing uh, my full-time work that I do and get more into just the teaching side of things. Uh, because in the last two years that I've been smithing, I've put out a little over 2,000 pieces and it's starting to catch up to me. And uh, so there's going to be some life changes I'm not none too happy about. I'm a fairly young man, but I have put in probably 35 years of hammering in two years time with the copper work that I've done. So I'm transitioning out of doing that and moving into uh, other things. So be in prayer for that. For those of you that pray or send good vibes my way or something. Um, hopefully that will be an easy transition. Um, yes, let me see. Bob Smith is not fond of Facebook. Yeah, we're also on Instagram. Um, Roy does have that installed on his phone. So uh, you can also message us on Instagram and get a hold of us that way. Stop. Yeah, it's going to be there for a little while. <laughs> I couldn't feel it in my hands, yeah. but, but uh, the wrist felt it. It's hot. The wrist felt it. Uh -huh. Yeah. <laughs> um, let's see. Don't it's... trust this guy to check your baby's milk for you. <laughs> It's not, it's not going to end well. It'll be an unhappy baby. <laughs> One unhappy baby. Let's see. Uh, I'm going back a few minutes, but um, there was another Bruce Lee quote from Officer Friendly. <laughs> Adapt what is useful, reject what is useless, and add what is specifically your own. There you go. I like that one. Good. I like that one. Manga 12. Oh, did you have something to say? Yeah, go ahead. Do, do okay. you question real quick? Sure. Uh, Manga on. 12. Is the anvil more of a heat sink than the press? Uh, yeah, pretty much. Uh, Anvil will keep heat sinking the material longer than what the press will. Uh, you know, a press will eventually heat up to where the dyes are hot enough that you can fry an egg on them um, if you let it get that hot. And so, uh, 465 pound anvil. I actually have something in the works to kind of talk a little bit. Some people talk about preheating anvils in the winter months. Uh, this is something that I don't do because I see it as a big waste of time. You're not going to get 465 pounds hot uh, anytime soon. So I can work. I can work a 12-hour day 
running some fairly heavy billets of steel, uh, which I've done before, like whenever I've had a lot of hammers or something to do, things like that. And Olga, it might be kind of spicy in one spot, but the rest of it's just dead cold. So, you know, it's, it's not going to... Yeah, you can't preheat an anvil this big, and so I find that kind of be silliness there. But that's an own personal thing. I've got a whole video planned out for that at a later date. Uh, but yeah, the anvil, 465 pounds of steel, it's going to suck the heat more. It just has more mass to draw it than what your press will or the dies that are in your press. Uh, usually when you first start pressing materials, the worst. You don't get a whole lot of work done for the first couple presses, but then after the dies heat up, you're, you're cooking with gravy. Questions? Anything else? Yes. Brent, jo okay, we have a few about where to get certain types of metal. Brent Jones, any suggestions on where to order billets of brass? Uh, billets of brass, where I get most of my specialty metals at is a place called Millennium metals it's down in moraine ohio I believe yeah they may have multiple or locations they might have multiple you can always locations try them up. um that's one place that i've used a lot they are very quick and speedy turnaround for service and quotes uh you can get them through atlas metals as well uh, that's another place that you can get uh large sections of stuff from uh, you're going to pay the price definitely new price that's going to happen in both those cases uh, the one great thing about millennium, millennium Metals is they will cut it to size for you. So if, let's say you only need four feet of a four inch square by four foot long piece of bronze or something like that, yeah, silica bronze or something, sheet. they'll cut it off. It may be on a 20 foot bar, but they'll cut off that four foot and sell it to you. Mm -hmm. um, so that is, uh, is kind of nice with Millennium Metals. Mm -hmm. um, Any, yes, anything else real quick before sure. I move on? So, yeah. uh, John Tompkins, questions. if you were to ask, what would Roy need or want the most? What would Roy need or want the most? Uh, I don't need anything, and I'm very thankful to God for that. The only thing that I would want probably the most is a larger space to work in. Pretty much. Uh, and a home. <laughs> we have a pretty good home. We've lived here for uh, over 10 years. We're mm -hmm. coming up on 11 now. years yep. now uh, that we've that we've lived here at this house. Mm -hmm. um, and it's been good to us. But uh, we would like to have a place, a little patch of our own, yep. uh, to call our own and have a much bigger workshop. And I would like a much bigger workshop so I could actually teach classes there at my house. Set it up specifically for teaching. Mm -hmm. that's that's what I would love to do so that's a one that's a pretty big one so all my smaller needs are taken care of uh, let's see one more I know you're trying to get started on something okay. uh, we had a $20 super chat from County Lane Forge he County says, Lane Forge thank you so much for that he says I truly oh, love you, sorry I, Go ahead. Go ahead. I truly Go. love what you're doing to help Chandler and would be honored to contribute to your cost of doing this bless you both thank you very much Thank you, thank you very much. So, um, like I said, we can all just do a little. You know, a little bit goes a long way towards helping somebody out. You know, it's kind of amazing to me. You know, Chandler, Chandler, he has a channel of over 170,000 subscribers. And last time I counted it, it was 170,534 to be exact subscribers as of when I read his, his, uh, was that today? Well, yeah, today okay. as what, what I watched. And, you know, just think if, I mean, even half, but, you know, say if every one of his subscribers that subscribed to his channel threw a dollar in his tip jar. I mean, that changes that dude's situation like, mm -hmm. 190 degrees, you know. So, a lot of hands make light work of a big problem in someone's life. And I believe we can all do a little something to help somebody else out. Um, I believe in having impact. And, uh, and, yeah, that's what I kind of stand for. So, happy to do it. In other words, long story short. Sorry. <laughs> Waffling on. Anything else? Yes. Good? Uh, sh do you want one more? Yeah, one more, and then okay. I'm going to speak. <laughs> yes. Okay. Sorry. Roy, I've been thinking. Oh, this is Jeff Sandling. 
Joe, I've been thinking about building a propane forge for inside my home shop, but I have natural gas and it's so much cheaper. What are your thoughts on the use of natural gas with a proper jetting? Perfectly fine. Uh, you're going to burn pretty much the same as propane. As far as BTU value, they're pretty much the same. Um, you know, uh, you're not going to really notice much in the difference, so to speak. They run at different pressures and have different orifice sizes that you need to get. Uh, but other than that, you're good to go, I'd say. Um, no. And that's just coming from the heating and air conditioning when I used to do that as a profession. Uh, there's no discernible difference between flames. Really not between the two. As far as, I'm sure there's probably a chemical difference and I'm pretty sure there's probably some actual differences that are uh, scientifically speaking. But as far as just, you know, seeing blue flames, blue flame, you know, yellow flames, yellow flame kind of thing with them, so. What's hotter? It says Manga 12. Which one's hotter? Uh, that, that I don't know. Like I said, I think they're both about the same in BTU rating. And BTUs, for anybody who doesn't know what BTUs are, they're British thermal units. It's a, it's a standard by which you can measure uh, heat. Let's see. Uh, I know you. Uh, Manny, $2. Paying it for it. Thank you, Manny. Hey, thank you, Manny. Thank you very much, sir. Uh, okay, go for it. <laughs> All right, we're good. All right. Okay, I'm going to throw this out here real quick. So, this is the type of punch I like to use. I like using a really short bodied punch to take and do my punching of holes. Okay? And the reason for that being is you get less deflection in them. If you have a really long punch, like way out here long, you can get, you can end up getting some bending, okay, happening and flexing. So your energy gets absorbed by the tool and wants to find a different way to go other than where you're trying to put it. Uh, much in the same way, you know, if you try to hit a piece of bar stock that's this short versus something that's this long, you'll know real quick that this has a lot more bounce to it. This will have a lot more bounce than if you just cut a little section about that big and hammer it on it. So the same thing with my tooling, I like to keep it short. So I reserve as much hitting energy to put through the tool as possible. Now you guys may see this actually bend. I had to reharden and temper this today uh, just for this purpose. You may actually see this thing bend in use. This was made out of 1045 and like I said, I would not suggest 1045 for making this tool. If you're going to do hammerheads, do 1095 or something higher, 5160, 4140, something. Something with a lot better grade or air hardening. I would go with an air hardening tool steel. That's it for that. Okay. Any questions? Good. All right, sure. Uh, Brett Jones commented earlier, I order my steel from New, Jil New Jersey Steel Baron. Um, yes, that is one place you can get some, especially for Damascus. Uh, let's see, Air and Great B, where do you get your tools? Uh, uh, that's a lengthy answer. <laughs> okay, I get my tools from all over the place. When I first got into blacksmithing, I got them anywhere I could find them. Whether it was at a junk shop, if it was at Quad State, Sofa at Quad State. Hey, yeah, that was still hot. Yeah. Um, anyways, I would get it at Quad State, Sofa, Yard Sales, junk shops, antique shops, you name it. That's where I get tools. Now, whenever I need a tool, I essentially buy it from a reputable manufacturer new or I, you know, from like Blacksmith Depot or something like that new or I will um, make it myself. If it's something easy to be made in the shop, I'll make it very quickly in the shop. I don't usually buy stuff like punches and chisels and things like that. I can very quickly make those uh, and so it's of a lot lower cost to me that way. Hopefully that answers it. That's that up. does. Derwin, yeah. to address your concerns, Roy is allowing the hammer to cool off, and that's why he was taking some uh, time to answer questions, and uh, that way he can continue further along in the process. Good. He had a question, Derwin did? Uh, yeah, he was just he was curious why, it was, why you weren't forging and you were uh, chatting instead. So. Yep, that's why. Let's see, Chris Frost, why do you temper your punch? Doesn't it mess up on the first punch? Pretty much, yeah. Um, 
I temper the I temper my punch because 1045 I quench in I quench in water. So it is very brittle when you first quench it. And so instead of it being glass hard and breaking on that first punch, I draw the temper back to like a very light straw color, pretty much. But within a few hammerheads, four or five hammerheads with 1045, it's shot. I mean the temper's shot with 1045. So that's why I can't recommend it, honestly. Let's see, Robert Poglich, need a tool, make a tool. <laughs> yeah, that's a Chandler line right there. How fitting is that? <laughs> that is, it's very oh. fitting. All right, I need to get myself a marker. All right, go ahead. Give me a second. John Coffey purchased a lot of great steel at Quad State. Uh, yeah, there's another place you can buy steel. Some yeah, people, that's a great place to get it. Uh, sometimes people bring wrought iron even down there. So if you if you keep your eye out, you can spot some of that too. Let's see if this will show up. Oh yeah, that's going to show up beautifully. All right, I'm going to showcase this here. Since I don't like to hunch over, I'm going to get out my old man seat. There you go. Take a rest. And take it easy for a second. <laughs> Do you need your, your drink too so you can stay hydrated? Oh, uh, no, I'm fine right <laughs> okay. now. Okay. So. Okay, so now I'm going to get to the designing portion of this uh, acanthus sleeve. And here in a second, you'll probably have to go check on the kids again. Yes, I will. I'm going to have to. Sorry, guys. There, yeah. I had to so, flip you around a little. The, <laughs> so anybody who has kids knows uh, if you pop them in front of the electronic babysitter called a movie, <laughs> um, and in our case, we got two daughters, so put princesses on. Uh, <laughs> You could, they'll, right, they're right. like drool factories for the next two hours, you know, and they don't know you exist, you pretty much. Uh, let me have that there. Uh, here. Uh, my square, please. Speed square. Down below the welding table bench. Yep. And bring me that, too, that ruler. A ruler, okay. Yes, ma'am. Okay, Thank will, you very much. So, I'll go check on Okay, that. you're going to check on them? Yes. Um, you're in focus. Am I in focus? Can they see what I'm doing? Or Yes. Do you want a close-up on the hammer? Or? Okay. Uh, uh, yeah, probably, get a close-up yeah. okay. on this hammer. So I won't be reading your all's comments, just so I can get you in close here. Uh, please forgive me if I miss anything. Uh, super chats and the like. But I want to show you guys how I'm designing this here. There we go. Okay, okay good. So I've done videos on acanthus leaves in the past. Uh, so I won't be going over like crazy super detail on the acanthus leaf, but I'll try if I can. Uh, you know, if I miss something and you need it to be repeated... I'll have to wait for Jessica to come out. So just make sure you put that in the comment section. So what I'm doing is I'm laying off a little bit of material for the hammer face itself. I'm going to dress off these corners and things, and I just want to keep my cuts away from the actual hammer face. Hopefully I'm in shot here. It looks like I am. So I'm going to start on this side. This gives me a reference point. So this way both sides are even. But I am coming essentially a half inch back. A half inch of material or 12.5 mil back from the front leading edge of this hammer. I'm going to flip it all the way over and I'm going to take that same measurement and do it again. So I can make sure that I stay even with both of these layouts. I want this to be nice and even. That way you can't tell one side from the other. This isn't important if you want to just free form it, you can. I'm trying to make it as nice as possible. And uh, this is the way I've gone about doing it. Now, the other thing that this will highlight for you is so let's say you need to grind a little or something, it'll, this is where it's important to have as square as you can to start with. So this way, this is exactly how far this one is. Otherwise, if it was crooked, this one would be up here. This one would be back here and you'll see why that's important here in a second. So now we're going to go ahead and we are going to take this inch and a quarter. We're going to divide it in half, which just happens to be, do, 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 do. So there's quarter, there's half, there's uh, whatever that is, five eighths. Yeah, which is five eighths of an inch, inch and a quarter. Not sure what that is. I want to say that's 16 mil. Divide it. You guys will have to forgive me on, on the metric side of things. I'm not all with it on that tonight. Just trying to get this done here. So I'm just making two lines, and I'm trying to find center, essentially. I found the center up here. I made a line. And now I'm going to find the center down here as well. This is going to be, help me keep everything symmetrical. So that there is about three-quarters of an inch wide. 
So 3 sixteenths ought to get me square. There we go. And you can eyeball this as well. Whenever you have two to do, you want to try to get it as square as you can. Uh, get everything as symmetrical as you can whenever you got two of something to do. So get that marked out. So there's our center line of our hammer. I'm going to do the same thing all the way on the other side. Now right here I like to point out, this is where it would get difficult if you had a swell here of the hammer handle already going through it. Uh, it would get a little more difficult here to do this. So just keep that in mind. You're doing designing and layout work. Again, three quarters of an inch down to three sixteenths, roughly. Okay, I'll get this line drawn out. And now you can see why we need this to cool down. So this way we can get all this marked out right. So hopefully you guys can see that. So now we got the center line established. We have how far we want to be off that hammer face established. Now we're going to draw in the detail. After we get the detail in, we will cold chase this piece. So I want to start out here at the hammer face and make sure I'm still here. And, okay, everybody can see this here. Okay. I want to start off here on the hammer face. And if you have a template or a pattern, this, is, this would be the optimum time to use it. So you can get these exactly identical as well. I don't, so I'm just going to wing it. This is where the differences in the side will probably come in. I'm just eyeballing it, and then I'll make adjustments to it, final adjustments to get it looking right with the actual final chasing. There. We don't want to come completely to center. We want to come where we still got space away from that center line, about equal space. And the reason why is this material is going to get pushed together and it's going to get a lot closer together as you go through here. So you don't want to start too close and then cut off the leaflet. So there is the design of the leaf starting. And then we want to come off of the same line and we want to add in our little side details, our little side flourishments. And those, we can measure those out if we want. but I'm just going to go what looks about natural at first, and then I'll make some measurements and make the other one do it the same. You can make this look as sterile as you like. And when I mean sterile, I mean you, you know, organic or non-organic. You can draw it out however you like on this. So, Jessica just came back. Yes, I did. Uh, are there any questions that I can answer currently? All right. Um... I'm going to go back just a hair so I can see what I've missed. Uh, County Line Forge, blessings for what you two are doing. Uh, we had a $2, you, $2 James Robert Super Chat. Thank you, James Robert. Uh, BJ Waters, ha, I wish I popped the e-babysitter on and have had a one-year-old freaking out at my feet and a four-year-old tearing down the house, lol. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, been there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, more times than not. Oh, all right, I think that looks too close together. I'm going to erase it with my thumb here. Okay. You guys are going to get to see me do that again. This is where the artistic eye comes in. You know, this is where you got to decide what you want it to look like. So take your time on this to get this right. Oh, I want this to be an attractive hammer because I want people to actually bid on it. And not say, well, that's nice. Give you 20 bucks. Let's see. Uh, Derwin had asked, what's a hammer worth $900? Manga 12 had answered, depends on what it is and who makes it. And then for anybody, Manga stated, anybody looking for our work can go check out our prices at our website. Uh, yep. PriceCenterIronworks.com. Thank you for uh, shouldering that burden of Getting in there and telling everybody where they can find our work. Yep. And I believe Manga 12's name is Jeremy. Is that it? Mm-hmm. Uh, Brett Jones, have you ever made a flatter hammer? Uh, yeah. Uh, essentially, well, I've got a couple different styles. This is a set hammer. Just a simple piece. 
I did my poor boy ace flatter. Um, it's again, name not coined by me. It was coined by another Smith at Quad State uh, called a poor boy's flatter. Fairly cheap to make if you've got a welder. But And then I've got another one that actually clamps onto a pair of tongs that I've made. That's a flatter. Mm -hmm. And I like it pretty well. Let's see, James Lewis. I hope this hammer goes for more than $900. It's going to an awesome guy. Yeah, I hope so too. We'll see how it goes, you know. I mean, it all depends on the right people bidding on it. Let's see, uh, Manga12, yes, Jeremy is his name. <laughs> yeah. So now, now I can begin to start laying off this actual uh, piece here and start working on it. I can actually hammer all this out cold. Before I do that, I'm going to go ahead and flip it around the other side. I'm going to do the same thing, same pattern. Um, you know, three... Pretty much three leaflets and then the center ridge line. So I hope this will, you guys will see this here in a second, how it's coming out. Anyways, I should mention at this point, this is a Tom Latine inspired hammer. Uh, you know, this is, this is essentially my design. It's kind of my take on it. Uh, but it was heavily inspired by... My mentor in the craft, Tom Latine. So, hmm. um, Manga Twelve asked, "Is this to help with Chandler's bills?" Uh, it's pretty much a gift. Um, if he needs it for, you know, he's welcome to use it for whatever he needs it for, whether that's it's moving um, thinking, expenses or uh, if he needs to get a lawyer or an, or an attorney. Um, to try to stay where he's at longer or just whatever it is that he has the most need of. Come to find out that was inch and a quarter. Yep. Boom. Both <laughs> sides. Ooh. I got that perfect. Yeah. Boom. Bam. Like that. So guys, this guys and gals, I want to point this out here. You know, so much there is so much guff floating around online these days about hammer size and anvil size and rights and wrongs of smithing and all this other stuff. And what really gets missed and unnoticed is the craft. You know, this portion right here, doing this layout work. Anybody can throw on some pop music and smash away at a lump of iron and then show you an end result. But it takes a lot of skill to be able to take and actually make these items that you see around there. They're, they're, you know, there's a reason why master smiths have master work and you're like, oh man, look at that. And then, and I'm not claiming to be a master at all, but then there's another reason why, you know, beginner work looks like beginner work. And the difference is, is the quality of the finish and how much time they spent designing the piece to have flow to have a good look at the end of it and thinking out these steps. And a lot of times on YouTube and short little GIFs and animations of forging and stuff, we miss this. We miss this portion of it. I could already had this done and just threw a handle in it today, and that would have been the live stream, but you would have effectively learned nothing. Mm -hmm. um, and, that, and that's what I hope to get across with my channel, you know, when people come here. Two and an eighth. Brad Jones has a mate. Two and an Amen. Yep. To what you're saying, Roy. Yep. Uh, welcome, Paul Scratch. Glad we're we're glad to have you here. Yeah, good to have you here. James Roberts says the work Roy is doing here is priceless. Thank you, James. Why? Thank you. Appreciate that. Brett Jones, I blame silly TV shows, aka Forged and Fire. Cough, cough. Hello, <laughs> well. <laughs> 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 that's funny that's too funny yeah you know too much goes along um you know too many people kind of get arrogant with it and and you know my my hammer is bigger than yours or i've been forging 35 years or i've been forging 40 or you know i went to such and such place and you know did such and such thing but there's never any proof in the pudding 
The proof's in the pudding. The way your work is. Let it speak for itself. Let it speak for you. If you do good work, no one can take that from you. No troll, no person that disagrees with you. Belief system. If you do good work, no one can take that from you. Paul's Garage says, I like Chandler's channel too. He's got the TIG welder I'm eyeing up to. Smiley face. <laughs> <laughs> Nikki Hughes started too early for me to catch the beginning, but I made it. Awesome. Good to have you here, Nikki Hughes. Thank you for showing up, buddy. Yeah, we started early because this is going to be a longer live stream. So Yeah, if right you good. couldn't tell for anybody who's <laughs> been here since <laughs> yeah. the start. Thank you, by the way. Also, also, I'd like to mention, if anybody's in this live stream, I don't know how many people we have. Uh, 72. We have 72 people. Mm -hmm. Make sure you remember to hit that like button. It helps promote the stream. And if you want to take any moment in the next probably 20 minutes or so before I really get into the hot forging of this, uh, you know, feel free to share this around. Um, share it around with whoever, this stream, and promote it. I'd like to get as much awareness about it as we can, you know, for Chandler. And uh, so take, take a moment and do that if you like. If you so feel inclined. Okay. Any questions? Uh, Manga 12. I like Chandler as well. Manga, sorry. I keep <laughs> I, I'm, I'm probably still not going to remember. But no, it's all right. <laughs> uh, where did I go? I just jumped away because other people commented. Um, I like Chandler as well and his fireside chats. He's a matter of a fact, a mastermind fellow with experience and brain power. Let's see. 79 Spirit. Since this is a fundraiser for Chandler, he has... Uh, and he's in a tight spot right now. I'll be betting. Awesome. awesome. Good to hear it. Thank yeah. you for that. If you are new to the live stream we're doing here, um, we will have a video coming out probably Monday um, with the link to the eBay listing where we'll be auctioning it off. Seamus, howdy from Ireland. Great work you're doing for Chandler. He's uh, one of the fist I watched getting into the craft. Awesome. Probably the first. That's yeah. what he probably meant. But. Well, could mean fist, like hammering too. Okay. Well, thank you for that. So, we can all do a little. Iron Sunrise Forge. I always forgot about the existence of the like buttons. So, even though I like videos, I don't always remember to hit the bu <laughs> like button, lol. Oh. Huh. So, there we go. We got our first line laid out. I don't know if anybody sees that there. Hi. Yeah, Quite kind of clearly. A, yeah, there's a little bit of a shadow when you turn it like that. See there? We got that first line mm -hmm. laid out. Yep, shiny. Now we're laying this out cold so we can find this hot. Mm -hmm. That way you can move more metal. Yep. That way when it counts, we can really move the metal. Let's see. Paul's Garage. You cannot mock other people's work unless you are sitting at a computer and not doing your own work. <laughs> Very true. If no one knows Paul over at Paul's Garage, uh, he has a absolutely great channel. Um, I'm a subscriber, been there for a long time. I really enjoy his humor. Um, so you guys should go check him out if you get the chance as well. Definitely worth the sub. Um, like I get a kick out of this humor. <laughs> Manga 12. Well, there is multitasking. That's true. You got to watch that too much. Yeah. Let's see. We've had on our live stream, so we have people watching while they are driving, people watching while they're out in their shop forging, <laughs> and other various activities. Oh, man. That's, you know what? That's funny. Yeah, multitasking. They're busy burning a piece while complaining <laughs> about you burning a piece. <laughs> You're burning a piece. Oh, whoops. That, that is actually probably what truly happens. <laughs> Shamrock Forge. Hello, hello. Just able to get on as I was driving when it started. Yeah. <laughs> oh, Shamrock, good to have you here. Let's see. Manga 12. Can you show us how to make a cold chisel? Yes, I can. So, a cold chisel, it'll be a fairly dry video, but I'll show you. Um, a cold chisel is nothing more than a regular, like a chisel. 
but instead of it being like a regular chisel, like a hot chisel, it has a different angle grind on it. That's the only thing that differentiates cold versus hot. Plus, a cold chisel is usually uh, not tempered as much. It's usually left pretty hard. Let's see. Uh, so now we got our second it. line in there. Go ahead. Somebody had said something? Oh, yeah. I was going to say, somebody had said Paul's, Paul's garage cyber bullies himself. And he says, that's right. I beat the trolls to the punch. <laughs> <laughs> Good. Uh, let's see here. What would I want to do here? I think I'm going to add an extra little bit here. I wasn't going to do this at first. I was going to leave it flowing. But it might look nice. Eh, let me think about it. It might look nice if this has a break line across here. No, I'm going to leave it flowing. See? Decisions, decisions. Decisions on the go. Yep. So now this is something I didn't talk about uh, before I started this. But you get a decision to make on this particular portion of this project when you're drawing this out. You can keep your veins flowing in this direction, or you can actually go the opposite way for a different effect. So you can make them actually go the opposite direction mm -hmm. for a whole different kind of look. So uh, just kind of design it, play around with that yourself, and figure out what you like. Let's see, Flipazoid27. Uh, yes, we've been formally invited to Forging at Ford. I'm going to try to take a look at that next time I'm on Facebook. Yep. Billy Martin, we are doing great today. Thank you for asking. John Coffee, watching on the big screen. Good. Hopefully the quality's decent. I'm not sure what exactly the preset presets are for our phone we're filming with. Steve Stokes says, I am introducing you all to my landlord right now, and he's excited about what you're doing for Chandler. Awesome. Cool. Well, hello, landlord. <laughs> Don't be like Chandler's landlord. <laughs> <laughs> I probably shouldn't say that. I don't want to get nobody else in trouble <laughs> with their landlords. Let's see. Manga 12. Yep, I kept asking, but you never commented back on my comments. Uh, yep, that was on... Depends where you're commenting. If it's on YouTube, we haven't been answering very many YouTube comments here lately. So that's yeah. why coming to the live stream is a great way to come and ask us questions. Yeah. By the way, everybody, I'd like, to, I'd like to just take a second to address that as well. Um, you know, I've been a little bit under the hiatus um, since my uh, uh, landlord died. Uh, he's, I'm not really good at processing emotion very well. Uh, it's something I'm working on, getting better at, and uh, I'm a bottler. It's what I do. And uh, so my... My, my landlord, not only was he my landlord, but he was a mentor to me and he was a friend. And uh, so I've been a little bit uh, just out of the loop, you know, kind of. It's If you don't have something to, nice to say or if you don't really feel it, you usually just don't say it at all is kind of how I adhere to it. That way I don't say the wrong thing and end up irking somebody off when I totally didn't mean to mm. at all just because... I'm emotionally messed up at a moment in time doesn't mean I need to emotionally mess somebody else up. So I've been a little off hiatus, so forgive me for that. Um, you know, but I'm getting back to it. Mental health is getting better <laughs> with that. So. Science Addict 77 says, hey, everybody takes their time to grieve. No shame in that. I'm usually a pretty chipper guy, uh, and I don't like people seeing that seeing me not be a chipper guy so I I watch that very closely manga 12 says yeah I rant and rave and blow when something bugs me to get it out used to bottle up anger but then bad things happen yeah 
my way is, well, yeah, it's never been good ever since my youth. I, I essentially, I blow up at people. And uh, so when I sense myself like that, I distance. And that's what I do. <laughs> As not to hurt uh, people I care about. So I just stay, stay away. Until I have had full time to process what I think about things. Oh. Iron Sunrise Forge. When I have problems, I fix it with a hammer. <laughs> <laughs> that always feels good. Fix or break. <laughs> fix, break. Yeah. Tomato, tomato. Okay, I gotta figure this out again. So, what happened here is through all the heavy forging, I should have went over it lightly on the other side and then flipped it. I wasn't thinking about mm -hmm. that. Um, I should have flipped it so this way this didn't get all messed up. But hopefully you guys can see that. Does that look good yeah. on camera? Oh, yeah, that looks good. So as you can see, you could leave it like this and it would be decorative enough. Uh, but oh no no, Enchante. <laughs> We're gonna make this we decorative. Shall do better. We shall do better. <laughs> so let's uh get this a little better if we can. Inch and a quarter. That was two and an eighth. Yep, yep, yep. So inch and a quarter. Questions, Jess? Comments? Yes, answers? Right. Sorry, I was getting distracted by your chalk marks. Answers to their deepest, darkest questions. <laughs> Hopefully not too deep and not too dark. <laughs> Rock Mike just showed up. It's hammer time. What weight? One and three quarter pound hammer. This is what I use daily in the shop, weight wise. Paul's Garage, Rock Mike, it's always hammer time. <laughs> <laughs> Ben Toom says 37 pounds. Roy, it's huge. <laughs> <laughs> 37 pounds. <laughs> that's one heck of a, well, that'd be a power hammer. <laughs> Roy built that thing that big. <laughs> Belly Martin, glad you stopped by. I uh, hope you have a good day at work. Yep, thank you for stopping by, Belly. Let's see. So we should remind everybody, we're going to be yes. here till 8 p.m. Mm-hmm. And then I'll be calling it quits at that wherever we've got it finished to. Mm -hmm. Whatever point it is, just wanted to bring you along for a little bit of the experience. Yes. Um, so, yes, if you're new, uh, as you probably saw in the title, um, this is a hammer that we are uh, doing. We're going to be auctioning it off on eBay uh, in support of Chandler Dickinson, who is being evicted. Um, so he's uh, his home and his shop. He's having to leave both of those. And so... Uh, I don't know is, if it's his home or just his well, shop. Well, okay. It's a shop space anyhow. I don't know if it was his home or not. But Yeah, so that's what this is in support of. So normally we do uh, Royce working on a small vice. And somebody asked about that earlier. I may have forgotten to read that one. They were asking uh, about um, that, if you had finished it, is what the question had been. Yeah, I, I answered that. I okay. answered that earlier in the live. No, I have not yet. That's going to be a pretty much all summer project in the live streams. This was just a special live stream. Granddad's Forge. Could you flow bronze into those lines for any sort of inlay? Uh, you could do inlay work with it. I don't know if you could flow bronze into it or not. I've never tried. So, possible, I guess. Uh, I think in order for it to stick or something, that there would have to be a reason for it to stick. And if you did it where you got it hot enough, like you would do copper or something for like brazing, that's that's a possibility that it would stay heavily in the grooves and then you could sand off the surface material and it would be like a faked inlay. Mm -hmm. So I could see that working. Take a little tinkering to figure that one out. Rock Mike started building some wolf gel tongs last night using your instructions. Awesome. Hopefully they will help you out. Her page says, looks great. Keep the awesome work coming, Roy. I have to run for a bit. Hey, that's all right. Thank you, Herb Page. Right? Herb Page, yep. Yes. <laughs> okay. Brett Jones says, that would look awesome. The bronze in it. Yeah. I haven't done any inlay in hammers yet. I have done inlay work. Um, but just not in hammers yet. Mm-hmm. Paul Scratch had said silicone bronze flows really well. Could be. It might braze itself in there. Yeah, I mean, that would be a neat look. That would definitely be a neat effect. 
I would probably make these really deep. Um, I do know uh, that you want to keep it really clean whenever you're brazing or something. You want to keep the material as clean as you can. So that might be something to keep in mind. If you're going to undergo that, you're going to have to be able to keep it fairly clean as you go until it's fully brazed in. Just so it flows nicely. Bella Martin, to answer your question about the raffle, um, there's kind of some formalities that goes with raffling things, and we didn't have the time to research it. Yeah. Um, so that's why we're not doing a raffle in this case. There, there are, there are certain legalities when it comes to YouTube and doing raffles, um, and same thing with like PayPal and uh, different uh, paying sources. Uh, you can get in some big trouble if you don't read it through. So mm -hmm. we haven't went that route just for that fact. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, not really a whole bunch of time to get ourselves well versed in it. Might be something to research so we can do it better in the future. Um, you know, if the need should arise for us to do something like this again. So mm -hmm. we've got to be real careful with not getting ourselves in hot water. Yeah. Over trying to do a nice thing. Nope, don't want hot water. Um, Manga 12, by the way, do you know what room of a house you do model working in? I'm guessing this is a joke, so I'm going to scroll down and see if you've given the answer. <laughs> <laughs> in the kitchen. <laughs> in the cook stove. <laughs> Wherever you have that. Let's see. Uh, my finger is not working. It's starting to get a little cold. I don't know if it's the screen. Uh, let's see. He must have answered it because somebody said, LOL, Minga, dad joke, cheesy or bad joke. That's still funny. I'm still <laughs> scrolling for the answer. Just have somebody repeat it to okay. you. We've got a lot of questions. Huh? All right. We're going to get through, baby. Okay. Uh, John Thompson. I heard Roy mention a new microphone earlier. How much do you need to raise for that? Um... The microphone we're looking at, well, we've got two microphones on the docket to get. One is a lapel mic for my standard videos. The other one is a shotgun mic. Uh, one's a Rode uh, video. Uh, it's a Rode microphone. It's a professional one. Allows me to have really good crisp audio. I believe that one's nearly $300. Mm -hmm. I think it is. Yeah. And then the lapel microphone, it's $180. Mm -hmm. It's about $180. Bucks. For the lapel microphone that I'm looking to get mm -hmm. um, to increase the quality, sound quality, there. Let's see, Rob Boone, sorry, gotta go. It's midnight in the Netherlands. Keep up the good work. Great initiative. All right, thank you. Thank you for joining us. Let's see, Science Addict 77, gotta catch the wife up to Cleveland. Catch you later. Catch you later, Science Addict. Thank you for being here. So how many people we have in the stream so far? All right, we've got uh, 66 currently. Well, thank you all for being here. And we have 76 likes. Awesome. Good, good, good. All right. So I think I've got this all laid out enough that I should be able to make a decent go of it in the forge. Hmm? And be able to find these lines. Find the lines still, still visible? Yep. Oh no, battery's low. Okay. Battery's low. All right. I'm going to take a slight intermission. Right over there. There's a power cord going out to the air compressor, Jess. Look. Orange power cord on the floor. Okay. Heading out to the air compressor. You got to go out to the air compressor and unplug it from there and bring it in. All right. So there's what we have so far. Um, well, everybody likes it. So like I said, that could look decorative in of itself. But it'll look even better once we get it fully formed. And luck would have it, we're sitting at two hours. Awesome. What height, Rock Mike asks, what height do you mount your anvils, Roy? Uh, this one here I want to say is like a 32, 32 to 33 inches. It's been a while since I measured it. Probably measure it just now for you. Um, 
I like them at a knuckle height. Yeah, it's 32 inches. Essentially, if you don't know how high to do it or knuckle height for you, it usually runs in line with your inseam measurement. So if you've ever had to be fitted for a suit or something like that, it's the inseam measurement. All right, so there we have it. Hope you guys like it. What do you think? Look okay? Are you a big man, like six foot five or shorter? Uh, I am six one? foot one. So I'm not six five, so I don't know if that considers as big. I wouldn't consider myself a big man, so. You're welcome, Debaca Maker. Thanks for being here. It would be about five, eight and a half. <laughs> Perfect, so a guy can put tongs between the legs, hey? Yep, that's exactly right. Uh, Rock Mike, perfect to put tongs between your legs. That's another great way of saying it, so. Oh, did your forge die? Right, I'm glad you all like it. Fine work. No, it's still stoked okay. up. That's okay. one great thing about bimutimus coal. It'll stoke forever. <laughs> Big would be 10, 2, and 500 pounds of muscle and mean. <laughs> That's funny. Yep, yeah, see how it does. Not for Ohio, Roy, but in Europe, you'd be, you'd a, be giant. a giant. <laughs> That's funny. Yeah, I'm definitely not what they call a big corn husker, like from Iowa or something from that uh, way. Um, I, am the, I am the biggest guy in my immediate family so i'm like the tallest kid in mm -hmm. my family so i was always the top i was actually short for a real long time and then i happened to get bigger so. did anybody have any questions about any of the chasing that i was doing there get that in there and start getting it warmed up here all right well, by the way for this first stage i'm gonna bring i'm not gonna bring this up like scalding hot either I'm going to bring it up to a nice bright red temperature and start working it there. And then I'm going to go over all my lines once and getting them deepened because at that red temperature I can see it. I can see those lines better. And once I get them all deepened once like that, then we'll bring it up to the high forging temperatures and really go to town and move some metal. Ben Team says, you guys will be out of luck. I'm only five foot one, so you would be on your knees to use my anvil. <laughs> LOL. I believe on my Instagram there's a video of my six-year-old hammering hot still, so you'll see. <laughs> <laughs> hey, nothing wrong with being a short guy, man. So, sometimes being tall isn't all that it's cracked up to be. Most of all my uncles and stuff are all like 6'4", six, 6'8", six, mm -hmm. stuff like that. Real big tall guys. 300 plus pounds kind of things. <laughs> And being that big has its advantages and a lot of disadvantages that come with it. Let's see, Brett Jones, why do you choose to use a cast a gas sorry, coal forge rather than gas? Just curious. Okay, so in this particular case, um, okay, one, so one answer for it. My current gas forge setup, I need to readjust my air gate damper. It allows too much oxygen through, so it over oxygenizes the steel. I hate that. I hate a lot of flaky scale on it and losing a lot to scale, okay? So that's number one to answer that uh, question of why right now. Now as far as why am I using the coal forge in particular, I was using the gas forge earlier to get a couple hammer billets, like I said, done that I need to get pre-prepped that I have for orders that I have to get out the door because it's just easier. I didn't have to manage them. I was using the press since my power hammer is still out of commission I haven't fixed the spring back proper yet um, I was using the press earlier and, and doing stuff so it was just easier than acting to maintain the coal fire but this here it's greater to demonstrate through here because you can hear me clearly if I had my gas forge running there's no way mm -hmm. on this side of the grave would you be able to hear me at all yeah or even on the other side of the grave so mm -hmm. you just wouldn't be able to hear me right now that's another reason for the lapel mic. If anybody goes and looks at uh, John Switzer over at Black Bear Forge, he has a great audio setup for his, uh, he has a lapel mic. 
I'm, mine's going to be essentially somewhat close to the same thing, but a little bit different. It's actually going to have what they call a squib of it. It's like a, it'll have like a little cord. It'll come up here, but it stops the rustling of your shirt and stuff in it. And it's also got like a little wind bonnet on it, so you don't make that pop sound with your voice. Um, but real great audio, even though he's got the Gas Forge running, you can actually hear him still talking. Mm -hmm. I've tried it with my Gas Forge and lost all the audio. Mm -hmm. in sound on a video so yes um oh paul's garage you had mentioned a little earlier you had made a comment about our microphones um yeah the micro the shot shotgun microphone roy wants to get is Rode's newest one and uh we have he does a lot of his filming on a mirrorless camera which is a lot like a digital slr um and so uh with that particular microphone it automatically turns on when the camera turns on so that you don't have a loss of uh, audio per se, like if you forgot to turn on your microphone. So yeah, so it automatically does it for you, and it has better preamps, what they call them, than what my uh, Lumex does. The Lumex has really horrible preamps, so it, 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 well, it's just really cruddy audio that it picks up, so to speak. It can only pick up so much audio, and so the Rode microphone we're wanting to get the pro uh, version has a lot of really good great preamps on it so we have better adjustment Brian Neely said being short isn't so bad said the tall guy <laughs> 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 lol man when I used to do heating and air conditioning you don't know how many days I prayed for shorter legs <laughs> when you stand in a basement all day that has you crooked over like this and you work next to a short guy that's just like, doo, 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 doo. you're like, <laughs> darn it. <laughs> BJ Waters had said, I'm pretty sure at six foot four and my wife at five foot one, she only married me for my ability to reach stuff on the top shelves of in our house. Height <laughs> discrimination. <laughs> Hashtag height hate. <laughs> Warmed up. Get the forging here. Uh, Ming Manga 12. Yes, but if you're short, you naturally command less respect and less likely to be picked for leadership roles. Yeah, I can see that. And loss of reach in a fight unless you're a grappler. <laughs> <laughs> I used to know some short guys that could fight pretty darn good, so... Mm -hmm. I wouldn't say that that's an, under, uh, an underdog story there. Paul's Garage had said, that's really cool. I use all independent stuff, most of which is old or free. Having it all connected like that would be great. Yeah. Yeah, you can use what you want to do. Uh, I'm at, right now I'm at a place with my business and stuff. You know, I'm short on time. I'm just short on time. So to produce the videos I want to produce, to reach the goals I want to reach, things like that, I've just got to buy good equipment. I have to bypass um some of the second hand stuff that maybe I could get, maybe it would work, maybe it wouldn't. Uh, things I could buy cheaper on eBay and things of that nature. Um, I, I kinda, at one of those points where I've learned with my business and what I'm doing, like you just buy good tools to start with and so that way it doesn't make a hassle on your life. I've tried too many times to go cheap and I've regretted it. Yeah. I've regretted it every ended time. Ended up buying and the nice thing. I ended up buying anyway. the nice thing anyhow, and I already spent a third of the cost on the junky part mm -hmm. when I should have just went for the nice thing. That Although, <laughs> that it totally does hurt. It does hurt. Yeah, it doesn't take away the pain. We did, yeah, we did an egg timer that way, and it was worthless. Uh, it, was, it, was, <laughs> it was horrible. We even tried to send it back, and they sent us money back and told us to keep it. <laughs> Pretty much. <laughs> we are like, we don't want it. We want you to take it back. They are like, no, no, you keep it. <laughs> yeah. It's like, that's how bad it was. <laughs> when a company doesn't even want their product back. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh. All right, let's go over the anvil, honey. All right, to this the anvil. Hot enough. So this is at a bright orange heat. I guess I lied. <laughs> um. Just clean it off here. That's kind of a pointless exercise, just habit. And now I'm going to come along and try to deepen up all these cuts. Let's see. Joshua Carrion says, What steel are you using? 1045, isn't it? Yep, 1045, tool steel. 
it's a low grade tool steel, so it's a soft, softer steel, low carbon tool steel. Not as high as like 1095 or the like. 55 Chevy 57 Chevy says, I like your channel a lot. Great content. I set my 95 pound at the right height. I am comfortable now. Thanks. Awesome. Glad that helped. Thank you for being a part of the channel. Ben Rutterham, short is a relative thing. I prefer vertically challenged. <laughs> there we go. We got the politically correct side of it. Paul's got good stuff is worth the price, but you need money to buy it to begin with. Yeah. Yep, true. Donald Roberts, is there anything on forging for disabled? Forging for disabled yep. people? There, there isn't right now, like, you know, as far as I know, as far as videos of anybody who is disabled showing their setups. Um, I've got some things in the works that I'm not at liberty to discuss just yet. Uh, they're still in the works, but uh, some tooling that I'm designing currently to actually help out disabled people, like disabled veterans. Um and things of that nature, and just anybody who's disabled that's looking to get into the craft of blacksmithing, I've got some uh, tooling that I'm designing. I'm not going to say anything about it until I get it designed and it actually works, and there's some testing done of it. You know, don't count your hens before they're hatched. <laughs> so, Alright, so you guys can see how that turned out. See how there's so much more depth than that yeah, now? That does. Deepened it quite Hopefully a bit. you guys can see that real um, good. Let's see. Oh, Champ Ironworks is that a chisel you're using or more of a butcher? Uh, it's a butcher tool for chisel. So a butcher is anything that has a leading edge. That means it has one edge in one direction. That's a butcher. All right. Mm -hmm. Reheat it up some more. Yep, I'm gonna reheat it up some more. Get it hot again. Yeah. Beat Roy. Now, guys, I was asked in one of my re previous live streams, is there any ever anything that I make that I don't want to give away after I make it? This is kind of starting to look really sweet along that level. <laughs> yeah. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> so, if no one else bids on it, I'm going to bid on it myself. It'll just stay at my house. So. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. There's quite a few people saying they're definitely going to put a bid in there. So. Uh, you might be bidding against me. <laughs> <laughs> Funny. It's pretty bad when a guy's got to bid against himself and pay his own fees and <laughs> ship it to himself. and. Yeah, just saying it one hand to the other. You yeah. Know. There you go. Uh, I'll shake my own hand. <laughs> nice doing business nice with you. Nice doing business with you, Roy. <laughs> uh, ben Toombs, in which way are you shoving the metal? Is it in towards the middle? Okay, so I am shoving the metal out. The ideal is I'm wanting to move the material out, not towards the center. Uh, the reason for that being is you want the center to sharply contrast. You want it to have a nice sharp line where the outside has a nice arch to it or a flowing line. So it'll look like, so if you can picture if we cut it away from the end, it's going to look like and you know obviously this is a hammer so you know, it's going to be thicker. That's essentially what we're going for. Hmm? Does that make sense? So this line will come out this way. Yeah, that gives it a real defined. That gives it a real center. defined line down the center. And then that can be forged on a little bit to give it some raising to where it comes up into a peak then. And it stands proud above everything else. Mm -hmm. uh, Question. Yes. There are questions. Champ Ironworks, LOL, eBay would probably still charge you shipping, probably. Yep, they would. <laughs> and final value fee credits and, uh, yeah, everything else. Uh, Jay Sanders. I could open up a buyer protection case against myself. Uh -huh, there you go. <laughs> Horrible buyer. Horrible seller. Leave myself feedback. 
Jay Sanders. That would be great as I am a disabled vet. I just bought a few packs of your stuff today. It was the Hardy Hold Down and two others. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah, so so the Hardy Hammer, that was kind of a bit of a, um, that was an example, if you will, of what is possible for disabled people or disabled veterans. Uh, you know, there's some guys that come back from war and they don't have legs, man. And so, uh, and limited strength, capabilities, things like that. And so the most common thing would be like, well, if you can't do it, you know, don't. Don't even try. I think that's bogus. You know, there, people come back all the time with disabilities and they go on to, you know, compete in the Olympics and all sorts of other things like that. Um, and so that's where the Hardy Hammer kind of came out of, the inspiration for that. Uh, as an ability because the foot switch, the control, it has a variable foot switch control versus an actual treadle that you have to press, like a clutch. And so you take that variable speed control and you could stick that in your armpit if you wanted to and control the hitting capacity of the hammer. Or you can stick it under your thigh or something and sit on it and, and, and control the hammering and mm. things. So it offers more options. You know, or you could mount it somehow to maybe a wheelchair or something, get up close to your anvil, and then press down on it with an elbow or something and be able to do some forging mm -hmm. um, and enjoy the craft. Um, GJ Clark 45 says, uh, Glenn GS Tong's channel is set up for sending it as anvil. Maybe you can get some tips there. Yeah. <clears throat> um, <clears throat> excuse me. Brett Jones says, I still think you should sell your anvil power hammer to market rather than just selling the plans. Hee <laughs> hee. Uh, that's a good that's a good point for a little um, ad. We actually are selling off some of Roy's power hammers. Um, I yeah. did a community post on this a couple of days ago, and uh, it's the beam hammer, the treadle hammer, and um, his portable coal forge. Let's go over here, huh? All right. Nice. So go if anybody's interested in uh, purchasing or just viewing those items, you can go over to the community tab and uh, see that there. Some of our spring cleaning stuff that we're selling off. Um, Sarah and Mike, if you're here, hello. I think, yep, there you are. Hi. Uh, let's see. Brian Neely, um, you had said that I do a few things. Uh, yeah, I do have some videos on the channel. I tried to go back and just tag them Jessica's Corner because somebody had recommended uh, that would be a good, um, a good way of finding my videos, so... I do have those, and they are in the playlist. Um, let's see. All right, you guys. Thanks for keeping the comment section clean. Great job. I was up scrolling and uh, looking for other things. So, Good. let's see. What happened? Uh, just one of the commenters was not being very friendly. But oh, well, um, that's fine. yeah, we had some, we had our moderators take care of it. So, okay. Well, whenever somebody's not being too friendly on this channel, we usually mention them by name and we say goodbye. <laughs> so, uh, keep it clean. There's families that watch this channel and I'm keeping it family centric. And, uh, if you think I'm going to get in hot water with YouTube for not keeping my channel clean, you got another thing coming to you. Mm -hmm. So. Or God. I'm not going to get in trouble with him either. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see. Uh, Joshua Precarion, where did you buy the 1045? Uh, I actually bought this. I got this a long time back uh, from my scrapyard. Um, I bought this that was new. It was trucked in uh, for me that the manager allowed me to get it. So that was the ideal behind it there. Any questions? Yes, Mike G. Are you making a new hammer, Roy? He just stopped in. Yeah, Mike. I'm. I'm actually making this hammer for Chandler. Or to auction to benefit. Oh, Chandler. yeah, to auction mm -hmm. to benefit Chandler. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Um. Yeah. For anybody who is not quite sure what we're talking about, there, I did update the description. So if you want to go watch Chandler Dickinson's video. 
uh, about the trouble he's having, um, the link's down there, so you are welcome to go check that out. Maybe check that out after this live stream. Yes, after the live Stick stream. around for the live stream. <laughs> <laughs> yes, we're on the important part, you know, the hot hot forging here. So. The hot chasing. Hot chasing. Yep. <sighs> Let's see, Lens instead looks good. Got Elliot, that's cool. Uh, Loof looks great. Good. Yeah, that's really coming along. Told you it goes quicker. <laughs> James Lewis, he says he likes the camera angle. Yeah, that does do it pretty good justice, good. doesn't it? It's good, yeah. Cool. Okay, so there we are. So we got that much done on that side. I will probably come along and deepen this cut one more time. The the runners there, and then we'll start on the other side. Mm -hmm. You can see the difference. Yeah. Wow. Oh, no dimension. No forging dimension. Forging dimension. I am. Can't mess that side. No forging dimension. Forging dimension. Mm-hmm. There you go. Let's see, Champ Ironworks. Is that butcher radius? It looks like it's rounded. Uh, one of them is. So this one is a curved butcher. It's a curved butcher. Mm -hmm. And it's got a slight radius backwards away from the leading edge. This one's just a straight butcher. And it's got a slight crown to it in the center. Let's see, Cody Lynch. Um, yes, we've mentioned that the auction is going to be on eBay. Uh, we're going to have a video announcement on our channel as well. With uh, the link will be down in the description when, it when is we get live, to it. When the yes. hammer is finished and the listing is live. Yep. Uh, James Lewis, what state is Chandler located? I believe it's New York. I believe so. I believe it's in New York State. Yeah. See, um, Derek Smead, nice to have you. Uh, JG Clark says New York State. Yeah, that's what I thought. Yep. So that's cool. Um, yeah, if anybody's just making it here, uh, we plan on going until about eight. So we still have about 40 minutes remaining, and we're just getting as far as we can on this chasing process here. Yep. Now, if I don't get to the punching side of things, you guys have seen that a million times on probably a million other channels. Basically, I'm just going to punch out the webbing, and then I'm going to drift it to size. I use mild steel drifts. This one's been with me a long time. I don't know. I'm just not even going to lie how long, but it's, a, it's been a long, long time I've had this drift. Um, but, yeah, I'm just going to drift it to the appropriate size for the handle after all the chasing work's done. Mm -hmm. That makes sense. Uh, John Tompkins, if you're looking for our PayPal, go to our YouTube uh, channel, and then under the About section, I believe it has all of the links to our websites there. Yep, and like a PayPal donate button or something, right? There's like a donate button there, mm -hmm. PayPal. Yeah, link. yeah, like a PayPal yep. donate. And thank you for that if you're donating. We really appreciate that. Yeah. It does help out the channel. Yes, thank you so much. Uh, Mike G. Hey Jessica, your sheet copper work has been great. Thank you. Yeah. Um, I can't. I don't even know if you can call it sheet copper per se. It's more oh, of a, it's a foil. It's sheet. Yeah, yeah. It's it's like a. It's a heavier tooling foil. Yeah. Yeah. It's tooling foil is what's called. Um, but yeah, I'm glad you've been enjoying that. I, I did metal embossing. Uh, I had it for a hobby for at least uh, about a year and a half. And um, during that year and a half, probably for about a year, I actually sold signs and stuff, um, and quite a few of them. Uh, but last, I believe it was last spring, or it might have been two years back now. Um, three. But three, okay, <laughs> yeah, yeah. three now. Yep, I start. I stopped offering them um, for selling them just so I could uh, do more behind the scenes stuff and work on our website. And uh, I have a bunch of stuff I was trying to do, and I just didn't have enough time for it all. And she homeschools the kids. And <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah. She's a busy lady. Yeah, yep. Yeah. And I, yeah, I was getting about 30 orders a month and it was just too much to keep up with everything. And we said, okay, we're gonna, we're just gonna let, let Roy off the leash. He can go wild with his blacksmith shop, you know, and that's kind of where he's, 
I guess that's kind of the line where I'm like, buy whatever tools you need, you know, just go for it. Yeah. So. See, the real story is she got lazy. I got, I got and lazy. And once they get lazy go. on you, uh -huh. <laughs> I better shut up or I'll be sleeping in the shop tonight. Oh. <laughs> sure, we'll just claim it under that. Uh, Scott Elliott, um, you said what's up with Chandler? Uh, he's being evicted um, from his shop and possibly his home. We're not sure if that's the same place. Um, but he has I don't think it's his home. I think it's okay. just his shop. Okay. He yeah. didn't make any mention of his home. So. Okay. Let's see. Yep. Mike G, I've done copper work, never did embossing though. Uh, yeah, it's, it's interesting. It's kind of, it's almost... I would almost like to think it's a little bit like chasing and repose, just on a very uh, thin scale. The metal's very, very thin, and it takes, um, instead of Go using a hand. hammer, okay. instead of using a hammer, you can just use hand tools, like little uh, shaped wooden dowel rods and things like that. Okay, now we got the one side done, we're going to do the other. Let's see. Uh, do I get my copper from a hobby shop or metal supplier? Um, I put a link to uh, Amazon. You can buy it in rolls, sometimes on eBay as well. Let's see. What site are you selling Roy's Portable Forge? That is on eBay. If you go under the community post, uh, I have links to all of the stuff we're selling off in a community and right over there. Uh, play hard or go home. Love the name. Thanks for the family friendly viewing. You're, You're very, very welcome. welcome. Something we strive for. Uh, Basin Ironworks, Derek Smead, $50 super chat. Oh, thank you so much for that. Appreciate that. He says, what gauge copper sheet do you recommend for flowers and any tips for finding on the cheap? I would use a 20 gauge material. Um, 20, 24 gauge material for flowers if you want to be at uh, still have some dimension to it, uh, you know, be able to put enough texture in it. I find mine, I find my materials mostly at the scrapyard down in Dayton. Uh, of course, not everybody has a Dayton scrapyard, so the best way to order that material is through an online source um, like Millennium Metals or uh, Atlas metals as well should carry it mm -hmm. uh, you know the thing is you're gonna have to probably when you buy it new you're obviously gonna have to pay the shipping and stuff and you don't want to uh, you know if you're gonna pay the shipping cost save up and get a good size sheet of it otherwise there's some places that you can really overpay like you can go to eBay and buy sheets of it like thin sheets that are like 12 inches square and it'll cost you an arm and a leg per cubic, uh, pure square inch of material versus buying a 4 by 8 sheet and having it shipped to you. Mm -hmm. So, something to keep in mind. Let's see, John Tompkins says, check your PayPal and thank you for your testimony. Thank you, John Tompkins. Appreciate that. And you're very welcome. Let's see, James Lewis. Hey, Roy, once you drift, won't you be messing up the chasing? No, I won't. So the drifting, I, I removed a lot of the material with the drill. So there'll be very little spread, actually. Um, there'll be punching involved. It'll, it will spread out a little bit. But since this is so deep, it's just going to look like it naturally flows around it. And that's what I'm wanting. So when you look at it on the side profile, it'll look like a leaf. That away. <laughs> John Coffey says, love the Dayton scrapyard. Yeah. LOL. I yeah. once ran into Roy. <laughs> yep, he's down there quite a bit. Yeah, he came up and approached me. He's like, hey, Roy. I'm like, uh-oh. <laughs> Who's this person? <laughs> Somebody knows my name. <laughs> And then I, then he got a little closer and I realized who it was. <laughs> I'm like, whoo, that's safe. Tito didn't find me yet. That's, that's a mobster <laughs> joke anyways. <laughs> for, those who for those who don't get that one, it was a, it was a joke. So, uh. <clears throat> all right, we'll get this good and hot again. But now you guys can see the progress, hopefully. So this side, 
We haven't done the outside lines yet, but you can see how much dimension that really gives the hammer. I think this is going to be a very clean hammer. I personally pride myself uh, on right off. If you see that sheen and that shine there, I pride myself on my work looking like that right off of the anvil. So that is something to, you know, you can go check on them, huh? That'd be good. Uh, that, that is something to try to strive for in your own work, is to have very clean looking ironwork right off the anvil if you can. That's the best way to do it. And uh, so I would like to encourage you to try your best to do that. It makes the rest of your day a lot easier, a lot nicer. Strive for that kind of metalwork. Now, there's guys who forge way cleaner than I do at the anvil, uh, but I am probably pretty good. I, I hold my own. Let's say I hold my own, so. Somebody said, shh. <laughs> Let's see here. Are we having a problem with Derwin, guys? Oh. If we're having a problem with a particular person, um, you know, we just have to, to block them. So, um, I don't, I don't, <laughs> I don't particularly care, you know, to get on a lot, get on a live stream, um, when it's for the good of somebody else and you're a pretty low person if you're going to be in a problem, be a problem in that live stream. So, uh, that way I can, I can block him from here. So I'll just trust my moderators that you guys can block him. Um. Who knows? Might just be a regular internet troll. Who knows? But uh, thank you all. We're, we won't give them any more credit than that. Thank you all for your comments on how nicely uh, the hammer's done. So once again, that's something you want to try to strive for if you can. Good, clean ironwork right off right off the anvil. Oh. Okay, J.G. Clark 45 said Derwin was inappropriate. If, he, if I catch him, I'll make sure I ban him completely. So... All right, let me come back over here. Jessica had to go check on the kids. Oh, yes, it's going to have a handle. It's going to be completely done. I've got file work I'm going to do on the handle, things like that. I'd really dress it up. Uh, yes, the face. Well, the face is pretty much already dressed. Uh, but as far as dressing it for forging, yes, it'll be dressed with a little bit of file work just, to, just for forging, so... No, it's not weird to drool over this piece. <laughs> uh. Yep, I'm going to leave it in a square face. That's correct. Let me flip you guys around. You're going to see my big ugly bug. Hey! All right. Let me flip you around while Jessica's gone. That way I can read and I can heat. I'm trying to stay on time. All right. Okay, Champ Ironworks, uh, take the corners off and the like. Yeah, I'm going to take the corners off slightly. I don't take my corners off very much. I will give it about an eighth inch radius to them. I don't like really soft corners on a hammer. It'll do that over a period of time and work and dressing it on your, on your own. So I leave them fairly crisp if I can, but not sharp. Right now, they're way too sharp for forging. You won't want to use those at all. Yeah, thank you everybody who's answering questions too for me a little bit, uh, ones that I've already covered. Thank you so much for that. And thank you for everybody who's left the like, and thank you so much for everybody who's left uh, Super Chat donations and PayPal donates and things like that. It really does help support the channel. We do greatly appreciate you all. Um, that wasn't what this live stream was about, but it does bless us, and it allows us to do things like this to help others. And uh, just keep paying it forward, man. That's what it's all about. <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry about that, Sarah. I'm sorry about that, Mike, uh, that you had to round the corners on it. It didn't take long, I'm sure, just a little little small sanding, so. Hey, <laughs> you can leave three more lights. Cool. <laughs> um, most likely, it's going to be late in the day Monday. Um, I am teaching, I've got a uh, Troy Christian Schools. I'm doing a demonstration, and I'm teaching for them up at my local blacksmithing club up in Sofa. 
uh, up at the Troy Fairgrounds or Miami County Fairgrounds here in Ohio. So I'll be up there late, and then it probably won't be until later in the day so I can get it handled and put it online. So, yep, 97 likes. Thank you all for being here. So, And for anybody who's just joined, thank you for being here. Well, we are making a hammer. Still doing the decorative part, so. Okay, James Lewis, that's fine, man. Anyway, you can throw some... Uh, Any way you can throw some support Chandler's way is a great way of doing it. Uh, yes, base and ironworks. Uh, Derek Speed said, for anyone who is interested, Chandler Dickinson has a PayPal button on his YouTube page. Yes, he certainly does. Uh, and that is, once again, if you want to ch support him directly, that is a great way of doing that. Uh, like I said in the beginning parts of the live stream, uh, you'd be amazed at how at how much people can do together. Just the little people, you know, uh, you know, just a lot of people doing very little actually makes very light work of a big problem in somebody's life. And so even a buck thrown in his tip jar through the PayPal thing, if he got enough people doing that, a lot of his problems are out the door. Uh, he could get another building if he needed to and, you know, Again, he can attribute that to everybody who's helped him out. And uh, continue to put out good content like he's been trying and struggling to do. So, that's a good. All right, BJ Waters, thank you so much for being here. God bless you as well. You're very welcome for all the work we put out. Uh, we're glad to do it. We can't ask for a better community, ain't that right, Jess? Jess just right. showed back up. So. I did. Oh. Yeah, <laughs> later, BJ Waters. So thank you for being here. So I'm gonna continue. I want to continue to do this. I will have an official video once again that spells out all the details and stuff. That should be out Monday, and it'll go live at the same time uh, the eBay listing goes live. So that way it'll have all the links and. Yep. All, all that good stuff will be set up, so be sure to be subscribing and jingly bell so you know when that comes out. Oh, three hours from Chandler. Okay, cool. Yay, the shop looks better now. I don't... <laughs> okay, I got the joke. That was funny. All right. All right. <laughs> he tripped me up on that one. Can you get it? They're saying because you just got back here, the shop looks better now. I know. Uh, I'm not, oh, I'm not oh, that you blonde. Know. Okay, she's not that blonde. Never mind. I'll shut up. Flip you around. <laughs> now they're looking at a jacket. Oh. Yes. Right, we're about to be back at the anvil again here in just a second. And keep deep in these cuts. Alrighty. Give me a hammer. I look cold. I'm not really that cold. My hands got a little, a little cool, but... <laughs> Let's see. Iron Sunrise Forge, five hours from you guys. That's not too bad. Yeah, five hours from us, that's not too bad. You ought to come on down sometime. Call ahead, though, to make sure <laughs> I'm here because... Yep. Uh, yeah, got to schedule that one in with me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, I'm going to come visit. Somebody stopped by the other day and was like, oh, you know, is Roy here? I'm like, no. Yeah, they made a whole trip. I mean, they came through... They were passing through from, I believe, Michigan, way up upper Michigan somewhere. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, they're like, oh, Roy's here. And it's like, no. They're like, he's at so far. <laughs> yeah. Well, I wanted to see Roy and yeah. talk to him about, I think, a hammer or something, power hammer. Mm -hmm. And I wanted to chat me up. And I was like, Jess is like, well, he ain't here. <laughs> <laughs> Not going to be. <laughs> oh. yeah. yeah. They're a little upset they made the trip for nothing, but. Uh, it kind of happens if you don't email. Oh. Yep. So, um, All right, going to the anvil and you can okay. ask questions or answers sure. or something? Yeah, I was just going to say, comment, the last class you did, Roy, you said you had quite a few people from out of state, which is pretty cool. Uh, yeah, I had people coming uh, five, six hours away. I believe one of them came about eight hours away, eight, nine hours away to take the class. So that was really... It was really nice of them to come take a class, and, and uh, they all left with really nice, handsome-looking pairs of tongs. So that's good. You know, that's better whenever that can happen.
you can talk. Okay. Find out what's up. I was, yeah, I was just intrigued there. Um, let's see. Armar, greetings from Mexico. Hello. Awesome. Good to have you here. Yeah. Hola. Let's see. Hopefully that's not too off course. <laughs> Par for the course. I don't know. Derek Smeen, 19 hours to Dayton from here. Oh, that's a good bit of a drive. Corey Shire, 2,000 miles away. <laughs> Sorry to hear that, Corey. <laughs> You're all alone out there in the wilderness. Of either the ocean or the other half of the United States. <laughs> So what I'm doing here is I'm going through, deepening my lines, and then you might see me go back a couple times, and when I go back, I am looking for chop marks, like where the chisel chopped into the piece, left a little back cut line, and I'm dressing those out as I go. Beautiful. And that'll be the downhill side. Just that out. See, Manga 12 says, oh, that's right, tomorrow is St. Patty's Day. For those of you who celebrate. Yeah, those of you that celebrate St. Patty's Day. Break Good out. luck to you and Godspeed. <laughs> <laughs> Break out the green. <laughs> Break out your green. Don't get pinched. Is that... That's on St. Patrick's Day. And so. they did that in school? I think so. Didn't they do that? I don't know. It's been a little while. Dude, it's been a long time since I've been in school, so. <laughs> long enough, anyhow. Granddad's Forge. Did you see John Switzer making wrought iron? Uh, yeah, I saw that. I thought that was a really neat series. That was a really cool way of doing it. Um, I mean, obviously, that's I guess that's the only way of doing it. But, <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah. Yeah, that was a real neat. That was a real neat thing. So, all right, gonna take one more heat on this, and now I'm gonna start working on these side cuts. This next heat, so you guys can see how it's starting to shape up, just like the other side. Mm -hmm. And I'm gonna come back along this side and redress this more after I get this one to its final depth and dimension. All right. We got. Let's see. We're 18 minutes from three hours. Okay, everybody, I'm gonna try. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see. Iron Sunrise Forge. I've been at, I've been on TV. Does that make me an actor? Question mark. And then Ben Toom says, "Was it cops?" <laughs> <laughs> bad boys, bad boys. What you gonna do? What you gonna do when they come for you? Ah, <laughs> uh, who misses all those shirtless people that are running from the law? <laughs> that was a good show. Maybe not wholesome, but funny to watch. <laughs> Let's see. Uh, Barton Haney. It's green for Catholics and orange for Protestants. Little known fact. Huh. Awesome. Yeah, I've never heard that one. Yeah, I've never played into it, so I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Iron Sunrise Forge. Scared frowny face. There you go with the emojis again. <laughs> Making me nervous with that theme song. <laughs> Just kidding, LOL. <laughs> That's funny. Uh, Champ Ironworks says, says, I think it's still on. Yeah, I don't think I like the newer version. I, I seen it once. About two, three years ago, there was one version that I was watching, and I wasn't too impressed with it. Jose Miguel says it was live PD. I guess that's what they call it now. Live PD now. Hmm. Uh, yeah. I guess cops is too astringent of a word now, maybe? I don't know. Mm -hmm. James Lewis says I'll be in the shop forging my first Damascus billet. Well, good luck. Cody Lynch, good night to all. Looking forward to seeing the finished product. All right, Cody Lynch, thank you for being here. Good night to you. Enjoy your rest. 
Billy Strong, my internet keeps cutting out, so y'all make sure to repost this, please. Yep, yep, we'll do. Yep, it'll be on the replay. Anybody who wants to watch it on the replay, that is. Three hours, so it's a it's a full-length fe feature film. James Lewis says, I'll need it, LOL, hand-forged. His Damascus will be hand-forged. <laughs> oh, okay, yeah. Yeah, you'll need it. <laughs> Better than luck, you'll need prayers, my friend. <laughs> <laughs> And everything else you can pull together. <laughs> Let's see. Stone the Alien. I've had this going for a while. I love watching the work take shape. Cool. It's my favorite part. The process of forging. All right. Stop. So going over the anvil. All righty. Sorry guys, that was a little jerky. Now for anybody who's wondering why I brushed that there, um, I'm not a big proponent on brushing steel. And the reason for that being is because as long as you're at a scaling heat, it's pointless to brush your material. Now, why is Roy brushing it? Well, I had this pointed down in the fire. So that means I could have junk stuck to it. And I, want, I don't want junk stuck up to my work when I start to pound on it, right? So I'm brushing off any junk that may be on in the fire. It's not for scale. I'm brushing off the junk that may be clung to my workpiece. As long as you're at a scaling heat, the material will continue to oxidize. If that makes sense. Mm -hmm. Let's see. Play hard or go home. You make it look so easy. I forged my first tongs and spoon yesterday. I need practice. I've uh, been at it for quite a little while. Oh, it does it does tend to make it look easier than what it is. Um, for the most part, I mean, this is just decoratively chiseling stuff. I mean, once you get the concept of the shape and the way it's supposed to all work together and go in conjunction, um, that's a basically what it is. Just decorative chiseling. So. Derek Smead says, what temperature is scaling heat? Scaling heat? Mm -hmm. Scaling heat, better, on the temp better than saying the temperature because it's different for different steels, is the color. So anything that is a dull orange or higher is a scaling heat. You're wasting time brushing it at that heat. Okay, there we go. It's looking nice. How's everybody like that? Does that look like a hammer you'd love to put in your toolbox? That is a pretty one. There we go. I've got the other side to go over one more time to just deepen it to this point. And then uh, we're going. So as you can see now, because of the chasing, it's given it this nice spread right in this area in a leaf-like shape. Mm -hmm. Anybody see that? Yeah, it does have a leaf. So it's shape. given it a nice peak right there in the center. So we're going to go ahead and go over this one more time, this other side, because it kind of got flattened out a little bit to just match it up with this side. And then before I go too much further with the decoration here, I will go ahead and punch this hole. So we'll do that next. And I think I'll have enough time to do that before the live's over. Okay. So. See, Manga 12, are you going to be drifting it tonight? Uh, I will be punching it tonight. I may drift it tonight as well. Um, I need to get it punched and drift before I do a little more decoration on it. So right now we've got still kind of a flat 2D image. I'm trying to get a 3D image. So I'm trying to get dimension this way. So if you look down be a good example I think. Okay so right now we've got a flat a 2D image. Okay we've got rises and falls in this direction and so you can see it from this end you can see rises and falls right but like you you won't see a whole lot of rises and falls in this direction actually. Okay so what I'm going to do later on is I will come back in with a ball punch a little ball end punch and right where each one of those little leaf 
things that you're seeing me cut out, each one of those little veins, right at the tip of that, I'm going to hammer right in there to give it kind of a swoop this way or a pucker. And what that pucker will do, and that's after I do all my drifting work. Once it's drifted to size, then I can do that. But what that pucker will do then is it will give you, when you look at it this way, it'll have a silhouette that's this way. And it will also, when you look at it flat on like this, it'll have a silhouette this way. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. It'll have a much more pleasing silhouette of a leaf that way. Yeah, you've done, I've seen one of yours, you've done a smaller one like that. That's gonna look really neat, the extra yeah. dimension like that. Yeah, it's gonna give it a lot of pop. Mm -hmm. Brett Jones, the green tape is so Roy can identify his tools when he goes and teaches a demonstration or workshop. Yep, he was letting somebody know that. Cool. Uh, Mark S, almost looked like I could see the core heat. And the, gl the glove helped show the heat color briefly. Oh, good. Let's see, Ben Toombs, can you put some wheels on that? That would be cool. <laughs> he said it looks like a racing hammer. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> looks fast. All right, I'm gonna bring this out here. All right. I'm gonna go ahead and try to give this a little more deep. I brought it out at a little colder temperature this time. Um, I don't need a ton of heat. I just kind of have to move fairly fast to get the depth I'm looking for. If I put too much heat into the hammer at this point, I'll flatten the other side down. And I don't want to do that. I don't want to flatten the other side down. Uh, that's the side. Yeah, it is. That's the side. That's what I was working on. All right. Again. And again. And again. And so on. I'm moving just a little faster on this one to try to get it nice and deep in this heat. Now this is the only annoying stage. I have a piece of tooling I would have used on this, uh, which would have made it a little nicer. It wouldn't have the tendency to kick. But I decided not to use it, and I'm regretting it. But we'll get through it. Stream's almost over. Most people wouldn't have some of the specialty tooling. Oh. Um, and mainly the type of tool I was talking about is I would have clamped up some angle iron and uh, used it in that way. Yeah, I didn't quite get as far as I wanted. I need to do this one more time yet. If I need to get them facets more established there. Because this side's okay, but I really like the other side. That side has so much more dimension than what this side does. I'm going to get one more heat and go back up these lines. All righty. Okay. Brett Jones says, side note, you're getting a lot better with the pickup tongs, Roy. Yeah, that's only because there's holes in this hammer that I can grip. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. He's the one sliding around. Oh, these little, these little nibs fit right into those tiny holes that I drilled, so... <laughs> That's the only reason why. <laughs> Let's see. Uh, Derek Smead had asked, like a hold fast, in reference to the tool you're talking about for holding the hammer. Uh, yeah, kind of like a hold fast. Really, what it is is it would be like a piece of clamped angle iron that stays down, and that it tightens this way like a vise, and it holds it. Oh. If I if I think of it, I'll show it in another video. Mm -hmm. I'm not gonna dig it out now, but. I'll show it in another hammer making video. Maybe we'll do another one of these because I like the looks of this one. So I'll probably make another one of these for myself just because <laughs> yeah. I like it. Yeah, that'd be cool. Anthony Chase looks awesome. I'd definitely be proud to beat some beat on some stuff with it. <laughs> Y'all got to be a little worried about a guy that says he's just be proud to beat on some random <laughs> objects with a hammer. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, he's Nothing got a question that individual. <laughs> Just swinging around. I'm messing with you. Let's see. Uh, earlier, Ben Toombs had mentioned the lighting in your shop has a lot to do with the way you see your color, too, so you have to get used to that. Yeah. Yep, true. Oh, like right here, one of the things I've changed, I've had to add a lot more light in the shop so the camera can pick it up, like late evenings and things like that for live streams. <laughs> yeah. um, and so with that being said... Uh, it does change the color, so you got to have to get used to it again. 
other than that, before then I ran a pretty dark shop before I started doing YouTube videos. It was a pretty dark shop. Donald Roberts, I was about to ask why you didn't use your hold down tool. The uh, the, well, the, the reason of the hold down tool, that actual hold down tool, the surface in which I need to chase is very small. Uh, the, the area is mostly all chased. So it wouldn't help to have a big finger right in the center of the work. Mm. You can only work on a half or a quarter at, at a time. So that's why this other tool I'm talking about, it clamps it in this direction so you can work on those faces. Mm -hmm. Let's see. Oh, we're up to 79. So we've had a few more people join us. So if you are awesome. new to the chat, feel free to say hi and we'll yep. see uh, see who is new. Yep. Anybody new to chat? Any new people in the chat, just say hello. Going to the anvil. All right. By the way, I'm also just heating the side of the material that I'm going to be chasing. So if anybody had any interest in that, uh, I'm heating the side of the material that I'm going to be hammering on the most. I'm leaving the other side that's going to go to the anvil cooler. So the side that I'm going to be chasing on, I put deeper in the fire to direct the heat better. sense for such a large mass. Yep. Somebody said a little bit ago they are afraid you're gonna whack your fingers. It happens from time to time. Um, I've done it enough now though I don't really worry about it so much. Uh, not the whacking the fingers mm -hmm. part but I used to worry all the time and uh, occasionally it'll bite me. I guess the other thing is I don't really got good circulation or feeling in my hands anymore, so um, that doesn't, <laughs> well, let's just say I can work a little longer at something that's hot without feeling it, mm -hmm. uh, where somebody else might say, oh, God, that's hot. Uh, I could do stuff where a few other people would have been uncomfortable already. Oh, there we go. Yeah, we got that all cleaned up. Any chase lol I like hammers I'm not gonna lie <laughs> you're a ham all right let's see what we got here I got one little nick there I need to dress out but I have to do that with a little smaller chasing tool nice and clean just like we want it so a non-scaling heat is at a cherry red all the way down to what like right now is considered a black heat which is like a dull red uh, down into an actual black heat which is just black black um, you can get your brushing done at this finishing heat and get it good and cleaned up so I'm hoping everybody will see that I'm hoping this will wet everybody's whistle and make them want to bid <laughs> there we have it so there's the chasing done to this point there we go cool. hey silly up good to have you here steve ward hello roy and jessica thank you again for the basket s hook you sent me it's or paul awesome. ellis i should say ha ha yeah i got gotcha. you <laughs> steve glad you're enjoying the basket s hook yeah glad you're enjoying it well, I don't know how much fun you can have with a basket S hook, but uh, we're glad you are. <laughs> oh, all right. So now we need to punch out this webbing. And what time are we running at here? Uh, Ooh, we're almost there. I think that I don't think I'll get to it. Okay. Um, this will be the next day. This would be the next step. I have to punch out this webbing. It's just like you've seen anybody else do in the past. Uh, nothing to it. I'm just going to drive a punch straight down through that to knock out the webbing. Then after that, I'm going to run a drift, a little small drift through it, uh, just to dress it out to the handle size I'm going to be using. Uh, and then that's pretty much it uh, for this. So, but I think that's where we're going to end it for this evening. Uh, it's been a long day. Uh, I thank everybody for joining us mm -hmm. uh, in it. 
and we'll flip it around here and talk to you guys for a few minutes and finish out the live stream right. So All right, sounds good. Hopefully that works good for everybody. All right. Our website name is www.blacksmithpdfs.com, and that'll also be down in the description too. And our regular website is yes. ChristCenteredIronworks.com. For any artwork, things, commissions, stuff like that, you go to ChristCenteredIronworks.com yes, for, yeah. for that information. Uh, if you have just general questions that you're wanting to have answered, um, and you're willing to have a little bit of a wait time, you want to take and go to uh, the Gmail, which is Christ Center Forge at Gmail. And then, yeah, and then plans, power hammer plans, sales like that is what yeah. she had mentioned. Yep. Blacksmithpdfs.com. Yep. So. Yep, exactly. All right. Woo! So, yeah, exactly, yeah, three minutes. So, there you go, or three hours. Rather. Right there at three hours. Thank you all so much for everybody who's been joined. Stayed here with us throughout this whole live stream. Thank you to all the new people out there. Thank you so much for everybody who's donated in the super chat. That was very gracious of you. Make sure to check out this, the, the hammer video on Monday that's coming out about this. And, uh, you know, make sure to put a bid in there for Chandler. Um, mm -hmm. But we're gonna try to get this hammer up as much as we can. I'm gonna put a lot of good effort into this. And uh, some real nice file work on the handle and things like that. So this way we can get it, uh, get it out to Chandler. Yeah. and uh, hopefully help him out in uh, his hour of need. So thank you all so much uh, for being here. I hope it was informative. If it was and it was worth your subscription, uh, definitely subscribe and remember to hit the jingly bell. Uh, that allows you to know whenever I upload videos. Yeah. And, uh, you know, we really do appreciate every last one of you out there. Thank you so much for hanging with us this evening. So that's going to be it for this evening. God bless everyone out there. And uh, don't forget, if you don't want to get the hammer or you don't think you can afford it or something, remember to just throw a little, uh, you know, throw a little pocket change, you know, yeah. Chan's way if you can over at his PayPal donate button mm -hmm. and uh, just help the guy out, pay it for there, ladies and gentlemen. Um, and uh, yeah, let's see if we can make a difference together. So thank you all so much. God bless you. We love you guys yep. and gals. <laughs> have and, an awesome uh, weekend. Have an awesome weekend. And uh, we will catch up with you all uh, Monday, uh, mm -hmm. afternoon, evening time frame. So yep. thank you all for watching. God bless. Bye.